on the audience. Let us speak to our Lord now. Great God, creator of heavens and earth, who has divinely appointed us this time this morning of worship to you, may we, Lord, in our hearts surrender ourselves completely to your divine will and the working of the Holy Spirit in us to bring forth that which you would have us to know. Our desire is to be better Christians and better representatives of you. Will you grant this to us this morning as we wait upon thee? In Jesus Christ's name, amen. We are very happy to be here this morning again and in the service of the great King. And we're sorry we again that we don't have the room for the people, but we have just we're trying to make out the best we can under the circumstances. Now, many have handkerchiefs and requests laying up here to be prayed over, and I'm just laying them to one side, not that I'm ignoring them, but I pray for them after I mainly like in tonight. I will this morning and then tonight again, when then I Pray and wait upon the Spirit of God for healing. And that's when I like to pray over the, the handkerchiefs and things. And on the special request, Billy gave them every one to me. There's about 300. And I just left the rooms in. You see, I'm just getting them just as fast as every one that I can uh, get to. And I'll get to them just as quick as I possibly can. I won't be able to get them all. Just reach in and have to get one and say, Lord, it'll be this one and be this one, just like that, because there are everyone needy, real request, something, no doubt, that we should talk together about. And uh, uh, let's, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit may say, a certain one that I read, that keeps on my heart, I go back to that again, hunt through there until I find it. Otherwise, just casually take them. Now, we also want to say this morning and greet those who are out in the other parts of the country. We want to greet the folks this morning by the way of this telephone hookup to New York City, Beaumont, Texas, Prescott, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, San Jose, California, Connecticut, Gainesville, Georgia, and New Albany, Indiana. Across the nation, we are greeting you in the name of the Lord Jesus. This morning in Indiana, it is a fair morning. We had a rain last night which cooled the weather. And we're, the tabernacle's packed out, and everybody's waiting with great anticipations for the Sunday school lesson. And I trust that the riches of God's blessings will be upon you out there. And we're uh, hoping soon as possible to make a, a way that we can have where we can bring all of us together maybe under a big tent, or I'm feeling real definitely led to preach on these seven last vials uh, in the Bible. So now, so that we won't be too long on a great lesson this morning, I have sought the Lord thinking what could I say knowing that this may be our last service that we'll ever have. The coming of the Lord is so close to hand. I see after that prediction made in California, there's houses out there and places sinking at the rate of 30 inches an hour. Timbers cracking and breaking in. They don't know what's doing it. We are at the end. $100,000 homes sinking. I got big headlines in the paper, or pictures that I hope to bring tonight as I want to speak on something on that tonight. And then tonight we have prayer for the sick. Come in this afternoon, 5, 6 o'clock or whenever it is. We're going to start early, I suppose, so that people can get away early. And um, uh, receive your prayer cards, and we'll be praying for the sick tonight, the Lord willing. Now, after prayerfully thinking, what must I do knowing that someday I must answer for what I say here? And I have decided or felt led by the Holy Spirit to 
speak this morning on prophecy to kind of uh, inform us. See, it's something that we, if we're not informed and anything happens just casually, we should know uh, about this. The Holy Spirit has given it to us to warn the people of the coming. You know, the Bible said that God will do nothing except first He uh, uh, shows His servants, the prophets, and and how that Jesus warned the people what would take place, how the prophets warned the people that would take place. And it behooves us now in the great hour that we're living to see what age we're living in and what's, hap- what's going to happen in this age. So one of these strange uh, subjects that perhaps we've read many times, uh, it fell upon my heart to, to speak to the people about it this morning. Now, <clears throat> let us turn over in our Bibles to Matthew, the 24th chapter, and read a portion of the Word. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> As a way of, of getting a context for our text and subject. Now, remember, we are going to teach this as a Bible class. Slow. Get your pencils and paper. I've got many scriptures written down here that, that you might be able to put these down then go home and study them. For this is just like a Sunday school class that we might know and be warned and prepared for the hours that we're living in. In the book of St. Matthew, <clears throat> pardon me, 24th verse, 24th chapter other, beginning with the 15th verse, I wish to read a portion of his word. And when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop, uh, housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elected. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even into the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered. Now, for a subject, I would like to take the 24th verse to emphasize on this verse for our Sunday school lesson this morning. And listen close while I reread this again. For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elected. Now, for a subject this morning, or a text rather, 
I want to take the anointed ones at the end time. That's the subject that I wish to speak on, or the text. The anointed ones at the end time. I believe that we are living in the end time. I think most anyone that the scripture reader or even a, a believer knows that we are now at the end of the history of the world. Amen. There will be no use of writing it because there won't be anybody to read it. It's at the end of the time. Just when? I do not know. Just how long it will be? Not even the angels of heaven knows that minute or hour. But we've been told by the Lord Jesus that when these things that we see now begin to come to pass, then to lift up our heads, for our redemption is drawing nigh. Now what drawing nigh means, I do not know. May mean, as the scientist said the other day on the television, speaking of the great Thousands of miles break in the earth that's going to sink. He was asked the question, it could sink there. That's Los Angeles, the West Coast, and many of you have seen how they followed it with radar. Went up through, broke in below San Jose, went across over into Alaska, out through the Aleutian Islands, about 200 miles out into the sea, and come back down into San Diego, went around and behind Los Angeles, and come up there. A great pocket. And all these earthquakes we've been having is the volcanic hitting this great uh, hollow dipper. Like in there, I uh, can't call the name that they, they called it. However, when that shakes, that gives these earthquakes we've been having for years on the West Coast. Now, it's cracked all the way around. And the scientist said, one, the man said to the other, that could fall in. He said, not could, but it will. He said, but not in our generation, perhaps. He said, in the next five minutes or the next five years. We don't know just when. This week was sent me a headlines in the paper, a big $100,000 homes cricking and cracking, the people moving away, and they don't know how to stop it. There's no way to stop it. See, God can do whatever He wants to, and there's nobody can tell Him how to do it. You build homes, you can make scientific things, and God is a creator of science. How are you going to stop Him? He can destroy the earth this morning by fleas if He wants to. Do you realize He can speak fleas into existence and they'd be 40 miles deep in a half hour's time? He is no to eat people right off the ground. He's God. He just does as He will. He's sovereign in Himself. Now, seeing all this accumulation of evidence that the hour that we now live in, I think it's a good thing to rehearse these things and to draw them out since the seals has been opened and find out the truth of these things, as God has been so loyal to us with His grace to show us these things. I want you to notice here in Matthew 24, Jesus used the term of Christ, the C-H-R-I-S-T-S, Christ, not Christ, but Christ, plural, not singular, Christ. Therefore, the word Christ means the anointed one. And then if it's anointed, there will be not only one, but many anointed. The anointed ones. See? See? And otherwise, if he wanted to break it down so we would more or less understand it better, he'd say, in the last days, there shall rise false anointed ones. Now, that seems almost impossible, see? The terms of anointed, but notice the very next words, and false prophets, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S. Plural. Now, anointed one is one with a message, and the only way the message can be brought out is by one that's anointed, and that would be a prophet. Anointed, there shall rise 
false anointed teachers. A prophet teaches what his message is. Anointed teachers. But anointed people with false teaching. Anointed ones. Christ, plural. Prophets, plural. And if there is such a thing as uh, a Christ, singular, then these would have to be anointed ones that their prophecy of what they were teaching would be the difference because they are anointed ones. Anointed. Now, it's a Sunday school lesson. We want to, to try to bring this to a real showdown by the Scriptures. Not by what someone else has said about but just reading the Scriptures. You may say, how can this be? Would the uh, anointed ones, what were they? Christ. C-H-R-I-S-T-S. Anointed Christ and false prophets, anointed ones, but false prophets. Jesus said uh, that uh, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Now, someone might say to me, uh, do you believe it that Anointing on those people means that it's anointing of the Holy Spirit? Yes, sir. The genuine Holy Spirit of God upon a person, and yet they are false. Now, listen close and see what he said. They shall show signs and wonders insomuch that it would deceive the very elected if it were possible. And they are anointed with the genuine Holy Spirit. I know this sounds very foolish, but we're going to take time and explain it by the word. That's absolutely thus saith the Lord, the truth. Now, let's turn in our Bibles just a minute to Matthew, the fifth chapter, and begin with the uh, the forty fifth verse. And see now as we read for a few moments on these scriptures and then if we get to here what well, we'll give you so you if we fail to read all of them then you get your Bible and, and also you can read them as you, we leave here and you go home and, and you read what the Bible says about it. Now to take our time to get a, a basic fact because I'm making a statement here that's astounding. How can the Holy Spirit anoint a false teacher? But that's what Jesus said would happen. Now, Matthew, the fifth chapter, the uh, forty-fifth verse. Let's read now. Let's get begin a a little behind it. The forty-fourth. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. The rain comes upon the evil as same as the good. Now, to follow this up to another prophecy pertaining to this, may we turn now to Hebrews, the sixth chapter, for the next follow-up verse on this, where Paul, bringing back to mind the same thing that Jesus said, Paul speaking now while you're hunting it, and you out in the broadcast, get your Bibles near you and a piece of paper, and look up this now, Hebrews, the sixth chapter, Paul writing to the Hebrews, showing them the shadows and the types bring them from under Judaism into Christianity, showing them how all the old things just foreshadowed the things that was to come. Paul speaking now, Hebrews 6, 
Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, C-H-R-I-S-T, singular, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance, dead works, and of faith towards God, of doctrine, of baptism, and of laying on of hands, on of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permits. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit. I want to call your attention just a minute. Do you notice that's gift and not gifts? Partakers are not the heavenly gifts, but the heavenly gift. Sanger, Christ, Sangler, gift, Sangler, heavenly gift, and made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted of the Word of God. Tasted of what? The Word of God and the power of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew themselves again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. For, listen, the earth drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it to bring forth herbs, meat, for them by whom it is dressed receiveth blessings from God. But that which beareth thorns, briars, is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned. Now I'll compare that with Matthew 5, 24 again. Notice, Jesus said, The rain and the sun comes up on the earth, and God sends it to prepare the food and the things for the peoples of the earth. And the rain is sent for the food, the herbs. But the terriers, weeds being in the field, receive the same thing. The same rain that makes the wheat grow is the same rain that makes the weeds grow. How I had such a lesson on that one time when I first met the Pentecostal people. And it was a great lesson to me. I seen two men, one never heard speaking in tongues before, one spoke in tongues, the other interpreted, vice versa, and would tell the truth. Say that there's many in here should repent tonight. There's women and men both, and people are raised up and go to the altar. I thought, how glorious. And then, with the little gift of the Holy Spirit, I talked to those men, just, you know, how in discernment, just a little way to find out. And one of them was a genuine Christian. And he was a real servant of Christ. And the other one was a hypocrite. And one of them, the one that was the hypocrite, was living with a black-headed woman running around with a blonde and had children by her. It was right there in the vision. Couldn't be denied. And I spoke to him about it. He looked at me and walked around the building. Now I was confused, sure enough. I thought I'd come into angels. Then I wondered if it was among devils. How could this be? I could not understand it. And for years, I kept my hands off of it to one day where George Smith, the boy goes with my daughter, we went yesterday up to the old mill place where I go to pray. And after being in there a couple of days, the Holy Spirit brought this scripture back to me. For the rain cometh off upon the earth to dress it with herbs. But thorns and thistles live by that same rain. And whose end is to be burned? Living by the same life-giving resource of God. Then I understood that by, Jesus said, by their fruits they are known. Now, therefore, the rain dropping down upon the natural uh, vegetation of the earth is a type of the spiritual rain which gives eternal life dropping down upon the church. 
For we call it the former rain and the latter rain, and it's a rain pouring out of God's Spirit upon His church. Notice, it's a very strange thing here. See, when them seed went in the ground, however they got there, they were thorns to begin with. But there the wheat that went in the ground and the herbs were herbs to begin with. And each herb producing itself over again showed that it was in the original beginning. And they will deceive the elected if it were possible. Because they're getting the same rain, same blessing, showing the same signs, same wonders. See? They will deceive or shall deceive the elected if it were possible. Now, a thorn cannot help being a thorn. And neither can wheat help being a wheat. It's what the Creator of each one determined at the beginning. That's the elected. The same rain... The sun rises of a morning and spreads across the earth as it had this earthen day that we live. And the sun, same sun, it rises in the east as the same sun it sets in the west. And that sun is sent to ripen the grain upon the earth which our bodies are made from. We are living by dead substance. That's the only way you can live. And if something has to die every day, so you live natural, then isn't it true that if your, your body has to live by dead substance for natural life, then you've got to have something die spiritually to save your spiritual life. And God became material, flesh, and died that we might live. There's no church, no other thing in the world can save you but God. That's the only thing that they live by. Now, run the Scriptures. Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And man shall not live by bread alone, but the physical... But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And you see, we live by the word. And that is God. Now, the sun comes across and ripens the grain. Now, it cannot ripen it all at once. As it goes on maturing, it constantly ripens. Until it comes to a full ear. So is it today. With the church. It started in its infancy. Back in the dark age. Where it's under the ground. It's grown now into maturity. And we can see it perfectly. How that God through nature. Always. You cannot disturb nature. That's what's the matter today. We're flying bombs and out there in that ocean, breaking it and busting it around with atomic bombs, you're just breaking more of that dirt off all the time, dropping into it. You cut down the trees, storms will take you. Dam up the river, it'll overflow. You've got to find God's way of doing things and stay in it. Amen. We've denominated people in the churches and organizations. Look what we got. Then God's provided way of it. But you see, He sends the rain back to a subject on the just and the unjust. Jesus tells you here now in Matthew 24, it would be a sign at the end time. Now, if this sign is only to be known at the end time, then it'll have to be after the opening of those seals. It's a sign of the end. That would be when these things happen, it'll be at the end time. 
and it'll be a sign now so the elected will not be confused and these things you see it? That has got to be revealed. Exposed. Notice, both the wheat and the weeds live by the same anointing from heaven. Both of them rejoice over it. I remember this, referring back to this instance, up there that day at the Green's Mill, uh, I seen that vision come up, and there was a great earth, and it had been all disked up. There went a sore forth first. I want to keep that before you. Watch what goes forth first. Now what follows it? And as this man with white on came forth around the earth sowing seed, then behind him come a man. Dark clothes on. Looked very sneaking, slipping along behind him, sowing weeds. And as this taken place, then I seen both crops come up. And as they come up, one was wheat, and the other was weed. And there come a drought. That one looked like both of them had their heads down, just crying for rain. Then there come a great cloud over the earth, and it rained, and the wheat raised up and said, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! And the weeds raised up and hollered, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Same result. Both of them perishing. Both of them going away. And then the wheat comes up and gets thirsty. And because it was in the same field, the same garden, the same place, under the same spout, there come up wheat and there come up terriers by the very same thing. Notice, the same anointing water brings forth, the wheat brings forth the weed. The same Holy Spirit that anoints the church. That gives them desire to save souls. That gives them power to perform miracles. It falls on the unjust, the same as the just. The very same Spirit. Now you can't make it another way and understand Matthew 24, 24. He said, there shall rise false Christ. False anointed ones. Anointed with the genuine thing. But be false prophets of it. False teachers of it. What would make a man want to be a false teacher? Something is truth. Now we get down to the mark of the beast in a few minutes. You'll see its denomination. False teachers. False anointed. Anointed Christ, but false teachers. It's the only way you can sit. Just like here some time ago, I've quoted this. I might quote it because we're hooked up across the nation. One day, I was talking to a friend of mine, where this is coming in this morning, in Arizona. And he had a, a citrus farm, and he had a, a tree there, which was an orange tree that was bearing grapefruits, and lemons, tangerines, tangelos. And I forget how many different fruits there was on that one tree. And I said to the, the, the man, I said, how is it? What kind of a tree is that? He said, the tree itself is an orange tree. I said, what has it got grapefruits on it? Why has it got lemons on it? He said, they're grafted into it. I said, I see. Well, now, I said, now, next year, when that tree comes forth with another crop of fruit, which they all write about the same time, I said, then... It will bring forth altogether oranges. If it's a navel orange tree, it will bring forth the navel oranges, won't it, sir? He said, no, sir. Every grafted branch will bring forth of its kind. I said, you mean that lemon vine will bring forth a lemon out of that orange tree? He said, yes, sir. Will the grapefruit bring forth a grapefruit out of that orange tree? He said, yes, sir. 
That's the nature of the branch that's grafted into it. I said, praise be to God. He said, what do you mean? I said, one more question. Now, will that orange tree ever bring forth oranges again? He said, when it puts forth another branch. When it puts forth another branch. Not when one's grafted into it, but they're all citrus fruit. And they live off of the citrus life that's in the citrus tree. I said, there you are. The Methodists will bring forth Methodists every time. The Baptists will bring forth Baptists every time. The Catholic will bring forth Catholic every time. But the church of the living God will produce Christ from the root. The word every time. If it ever puts forth another vine. Of its own. Now, you can graft it in there. You see, every grapefruit, lemon, tangelo, tangerine, whatever the citrus fruits they are, every one of them can live in that tree, but bearing false witness of the tree, living by the tree. You see it? They are living and thriving on the genuine life that's in that tree. Now, there's Matthew 24. 24. Living by the same life. But they wasn't right at the beginning. They're bearing false witness of that tree. It's an orange tree. Yet it's a citrus tree. And they say this church, this denomination, is bearing record of Christ. And got a false baptism. False witness of the word. Trying to say that the power of God was only for the disciples. Jesus himself said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every branch that will ever tree will ever bring forth. Every branch that will be in the tree. And these signs shall follow the genuine branches. Or as long as it's a tree, as long as it's putting forth branches to the end of the world, in my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, drink deadly things, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. See the hour we're living? See what Jesus said? Remember, this is at the end time. Not back under Wesley, back there. Now at the end time this was to take place. Now, watch the scriptures. Let them testify. Jesus said, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think or believe that you have eternal life, and they are the ones that testify of me. In other words, if this tree ever brings forth a branch, I am the vine, the tree, ye are the branches. He that believeth in me, the works that I do, shall he do also. St. John 14, 12. Now, he that abideth in me, he that, him, that was in my root, at the beginning, that's the reason Jesus was both the root and offspring of David. He was before David, in David, and after David. Both root and offspring of David, the morning star, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, Alpha and Omega, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, in Him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Both root and offspring of David, He that is the elected life, the predestinated life that's in me, and He is the Word. From the beginning, when he comes forth, he'll bear my fruit. Say John fourteen twelve. But others will live by the same thing, call themselves Christians and believers. Not all that saith, Lord, Lord, will enter in. Now, this is to take place and be manifested in the last days, when the mysteries of God should be finished. 
as we'll get to a little later. These trees, the true vine and false vine. You've heard me preach on that since from years ago. How they brought up together. Brought them in individuals and showed that from Cain and Abel, the two vines that met at an altar, both of them religious, both of them anointed, both of them desiring life and worshiping the same God. And one was rejected and the other received. And the only way that the one that was received could have done anything different from his brother, it was revealed to him. For the Bible said, by faith, Hebrews 11th chapter, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than that of Cain, which God testified that he was righteous. Jesus said the spiritual revelation of who he was. Who does man say, I the Son of Man am? He said, Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed art thou, son of Simon, son of Jonas. Flesh and blood never reveal this to you. My Father which is in heaven has revealed it. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. What? The true revelation of the Word. There's the true vine again. Abel, by faith, you said it wasn't a revelation. What is faith? Faith is something that's revealed to you that is not yet, but you believe it will be. <clears throat> faith is the revelation of the will of God. So by revelation, and the churches today don't even believe in spiritual revelation. They believe in a dogmatic teaching of some system. By revelation, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than that of Cain, which God testified he was righteous. Amen. I hope you see that. See where we're living? See the hour? I was talking to a, a gentleman not long ago, a Christian scholar and gentleman. He said, Mr. Branham, we refuse all revelations. I said, then you have to refuse Jesus Christ. For He is the revelation of God. God revealed in human flesh unless you see it, you're lost. Jesus said, except you believe it, I'm He. You'll die in your sins. He is the revelation of God. The Spirit of God revealed in human form. You can't believe that, you're lost. If you put Him a third person, second person, or any other person besides God, you're lost. Except you believe that I am He, you'll die in your sins. Amen. Revelation. No wonder they couldn't see Him. No man can come to me except my Father draws Him. And all the Father has given to me in the roots will come to me. Hmm? You get it? Oh, how we should love Him, adore Him, praise Him. To see the fruit of the Spirit in the last days and the bride tree ripening in the top of the time. The true vine and the false vine both had the same anointing. The water fell on both of them. No wonder he warned us it would deceive the very elected if it was possible. Notice, they look the same. They're anointed the same. But notice, by their fruit. How do you know, it, how you know that isn't an orange? Because it's bearing a grapefruit. That vine's all right. It's living in the tree, but it's bearing a grapefruit. It isn't like the first one. And if a church says they believe Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever and denies power, denies works, denies word, if, it, if the church that believes in Jesus Christ will do the works of Jesus Christ, it'll have the life of Jesus Christ. And if it isn't, no matter if the life is pouring into it, if it isn't predestinated from the roots... It'll bear grapefruit every time or something different. But if it's a predestinated life in the roots, it'll bear Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. If it's the Word coming up through the root, which He is the root, the beginning of time, 
Notice. But it's what they produce that tells you the difference. By their fruit, Jesus said, you shall know them. Man does not gather grapes off of a thistle. Even though the thistle be right in the grapevine. That could be possible. But the fruit will tell it. What is the fruit? The word. For the fruit for the season. That's what it is. They're teaching. The teaching of what? The teaching of the season. What time it is. Man's doctrine, denominational doctrine, but or God's word for the season. Now, the time gets away so quick that we could bear on that a long time. But I'm sure that you, your president, I'm sure you across the nation can see what I'm trying to tell you. For we don't have too much longer to stay on it. But you might see that the anointing gets on the unjust, the false teachers, and causes them to do exactly what God told them not to do. But they'll do it anyhow. Why? They cannot help it. How can a thistle be anything else but a thistle? No matter how much good rain sprinkled on it, it's got to be a thistle. That's the reason Jesus said they'll be so close it would deceive the very elected which is in the roots if it were possible. But it ain't possible. A wheat can do nothing but bear wheat. That's all he can bear. Notice. Remember, God is not the author of organization. The devil is the author of organization. I proved that by the word back and forth and over and over. Won't have to go into that this morning. We know that God never did organize people together like that. Make an organization. Hundreds of years after the death of the last disciple before they ever had the first organization. Always proved a failure. If it isn't, why are we together in love today? Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic and all. Why ain't the works of God following us then? Every church on the same thing, the word. Those things that separate man. Brotherhood. We're farther from God than we ever was. The churches. Speaking of. Now, we're told that all the old things happen for examples, for our teaching, reproofs, admonitions, that all the old things of the Old Testament happen foreshadowed to see what would be in the New Testament nowadays. Just like if you'd never seen your hand and you looked up and you seen a shadow on the wall as my hand would be from the light. If it's got five fingers here in a shadow, when they're negative and you move your hands towards being the positive, towards the, towards the negative, it's got to come to five fingers. As the Bible tells us, it's the Old Testament being a shadow type of the new things, or the things that was to come. Not the very thing that is, but it is a shadow, a type of the things that is to come. Let us go back and see if this thing ever was in any other age. Are you willing? So we'll know to prove this back and forth by the Word. Not by some man's idea, some theory, I don't care who he is. Any other man, myself, or anybody else, if he speaks not according to the law and the prophets, there's no light in him. That's what the Bible said. Let every man's word be a lie and mine be true, regardless who it is. Now let's go back and find out if this ever happened to show us an example. We could go back over now in the book of Exodus and speak of a character named Moses who was an anointed prophet sent of God with the word of God and the will of God for his generation. As God's word always runs in continuity, he said he did nothing until he revealed it to his prophets first. Then he done it. Now, he cannot lie. He can't lie and be God. No, sir, he's got to remain true. There's no lie in him. He's, and he cannot change it. If he does, then he's not God. He made a mistake. He's got to be infinite. And infinite cannot make a mistake. <clears throat> See? So what God ever says, that's eternally right. See? And he promised that. So watch, there's no word in the Bible unless it follows continuity right to it. Now, God had promised Abraham 
that his seed would be a stranger in a strange land for 400 years, and then he'd bring him out with a great hand of might and power, show his signs and wonders amongst the people that they dwelt with. The time of the promise drew nigh. People forgot about it. They had Pharisees and Sadducees and so forth, denominations. But all of a sudden, there come God alone and draw from out, away from any of them. God never in any day or at any time ever called a prophet out of a denomination. No, sir. He so twisted up, he couldn't do it. He'd have to stay at that denomination. Moses, a man sent from God with the Word of God, and on his journey taking Israel into the Promised Land strictly with the commandment of God, he met another prophet, another anointed one that had a genuine anointing of the same Holy Spirit that was upon Moses. Right. He was a prophet. The Holy Spirit was upon this man. His name was Balaam. We're all acquainted with him. Well, the very things the same, the things, the things that the man said is still taking place about 2,800 years ago. Thou art like a unicorn, old Israel. Whoever blesses you will be blessed. Whoever curses you will be cursed. Your strength, mighty. How righteous are thy tents, O Jacob. See, he couldn't help himself. He come there purposing in his heart to curse the people. Oh, you false teachers. Listen to these tapes. All these years and seeing God confirm exactly what he said and you said in your study. I know it's the truth. And because of your denominational differences, you dispute them and tell your people they're not so wall unto you. Amen. Your Amen. time is close at hand. Amen. Balaam, anointed with the same spirit that was up on Moses. What was the difference? The teaching of Moses was perfect. The Bible said here in Second Peter that it was the teaching of Balaam that Israel received that God never did forgive. Unpardonable sin. Not a one of them got saved. Though they had come out under the blessings of God and seen the hand of God moving by this mighty prophet and seen it exactly vindicated by God, and because another prophet come in with a teaching contrary and disputed with Moses and tried to prove to the people that Moses was wrong and Dathan Korah many of them agreed with him and taught the children of Israel to commit fornications to go after his organization that were all the same whether we're Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian or Pentecostals and what more we're all the same. We're not the same. Ye are a separated people. Holy unto the Lord. Dedicated to the Word and the Spirit of God to bear fruit of His promise of this day. And you're not of them. I know that's awful strong. But that's the truth just the same. Dedicated to a service in this last day. Come out from amongst us. Now, the teaching of Balaam, not the prophecy of Balaam, that was all right. That was God. How many believes that? Amen. The prophecy of Balaam was exactly right because he couldn't speak nothing else. The anointing of God wouldn't speak nothing else. And God vindicated it by proving it was the truth. But it was the teaching of Balaam. Now, I'll compare that with Matthew 24, 24. Anointed ones, but their teaching is false. <clears throat> Trinities and all things like that. Wrong! Antichrist! I hope your feelings don't get hurt and don't turn that, uh, that uh, phone's off and don't get up and go out. Just sit still and let's see if the Holy Spirit won't reveal it to us. And prove it to us. 
Say, but that, just whatever you believe, just sit still. Listen, ask God to open your heart. Then you'll find out whether you're a bra or a thistle or wherever you're standing. See? Now, even Judas, foreordained to the condemnation he was, sat there before Jesus, and Jesus told him, You are the one! Whatever you're going to do and whatever you've got to do, go do it quickly. Him knowing what he was doing, but for them 30 pieces of silver and popularity, sold the Lord Jesus Christ. One of his disciples, the treasure of the church. Jesus called him his friend. And the Bible said he was born. The son of perdition. Just the same that Jesus is born the Son of God. Deceive the very elected if it were possible. Notice closely as we study on. We'll take another instant over the book of Kings. There was a a prophet, and his name was Micah. He was the son of Emelin. And he was a prophet. He was. And there was another prophet, the head of an organization of prophets, anointed ones. The Bible said they were prophets, just the same as said Balaam was a prophet. Anointed ones. And there was one of them by the name of Micah who was anointed with God and sent by God with the word of God. There was one Zedekiah who thought he was sent by God. He was anointed of God, but his teaching was contrary to the Word of God. Rise false Christ. Show great signs. We deceive the elected if possible. Notice both of them. Both of them anointed. Now how could you tell which was right and wrong? Watch what the Word promised to Ahab. The prophet which was before him, which was Elijah, one of the greatest prophets of the age. It was a vindicated prophet. That vindicated prophet said that because Ahab had done this evil that the dogs would lick his blood, took a Naboth's life. And that the dogs would eat Jezebel and the, her body would be dung up on the fields. Now, how can you bless what God has cursed? For how can you curse, as Balaam said, what God has blessed? But these prophets were sincere. There were no doubt but what they were good men. Honorable men. Or to be a prophet in Israel, you must be honorable. Or to even be an Israelite, you were stoned. If not, they were honorable men. They were smart men. They were educated men. They were the selected of Ahab of the nation. See that, Sister Wright? The selected of the nation. Well, fitted for the... And now, when Micah saw his vision, he knew in his heart what the Word had said, but he wanted to see what the Spirit was in him would say. So they told him, they said, you say the same thing these other prophets say. And when you do, uh, you'll be, we'll take you into the fellowship, no doubt, again. See? We'll make you one of us. We'll take you back into the denomination of us. You're, you, we know you're a prophet, but you're always saying cursing things. You're always cursing your head. Now, Zedekiah, the chief man, the pope or the whatever he was, now he's blessed Ahab and said, go do it. Now, you say the same thing, Emlyn. Well, you're just a poor guy. You ain't got no congregation hardly at all. And these guys got millions, the whole nation's for them. Now, you say the same as they do. See what you'll do? You'll... You eat the rich of the land? He's talking to the wrong man there. What if he'd been said, can you find any fault in Zedekiah? Micah? No. Did you ever catch him in sin? No. Did you ever hear him cuss anybody? No. Did you ever catch him drunk? No. Can you dispute his education? No. You believe his doctor's degree is false? No. You believe his is uh, PhD is all right? Sure. By the Sanhedrin Council, I guess it's all council, I guess it's all right. Well then, why don't you 
Don't you join with him because he's off of the word. Amen. Well, we'll have a showdown of it then. Amen. Like Elijah the prophet before them. And if you're a child of God, you'll stay at the prophet of this Bible. Amen. It's a word. Notice the hour of the season. Well, what if Zedekiah say, oh, I know the prophet said that, but that's for a future generation. That's for a long time from now. He said, wait till I see a vision from God, and then I'll tell you. So then you say the same thing as I'll say, just what God says. Nothing else, nothing more. I can't add one word to it or take one word from it. So that night in prayer, the Lord came to him in vision. He went out the next morning. He said, there's two prophets, the greatest man in the nation, in the military and national sight. But Zedekiah, he's the head prophet by the king. He's the head of all the other prophets by organization. He was made by his organization, the head of all of them, probably the best read, the best educated, or eligible for the job. And he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. For he's called a prophet. Sure. Not just an ordinary prophet. He was a Hebrew prophet. Now watch him. <clears throat> Zedekiah said, The Lord spoke to me. Make me these two horns of iron. A symbol. A prophet usually gives symbols. He said, Make these horns of iron. The Holy Spirit said to me, Take these. The anointing it bless me. Don't think it is a sacrificial, but to get in a point. The Holy Spirit that speaks in tongues through me. The one that's vindicated me. He said, take these horns and fire this. Tell the king that he'll push Syria, plumb out of the country, and I will give him back the land that rightly belongs to Israel, the church. Brother, that's pretty fundamental. Just about like Balaam was up here. Balaam is just as fundamentally speaking as Moses was. Moses, the correct number of God is seven. And Balaam said, build me seven altars, seven clean sacrifices, oxes, and seven rams. That's speaking of the coming of the Son of God. Fundamentally, he was just as right as any of them. And here's Zedekiah, just as fundamentally right, for this land belongs to us. While them Syrians and Philistines were there filling their bellies of their children and so forth, our enemy with the food that our children does without when God gave us this land. Brother, that's a good argument. I guess he could scream that out before Israel and they could shout as hard as he could. Now I'm talking about today, now I hope you're following me. All the screaming hollering, remember David last Sunday? You out there in radio land or the land of this uh, telephone hookup, if you didn't get last Sunday's message, be sure to get it. Trying to do God a service without being ordained to do it. No matter how sincere or good, it's absolutely not received by God. Now, here's Zedekiah thinking he's right. Micah said, let me ask God. So he come down the next morning with thus saith the Lord. He checked his vision with the word. Now, if he would have said to Zedekiah, do you know what the prophet of the Bible here said would happen to this guy? But not at this time. Because this man is an honorable man. He's trying to fail to get this. He's trying to give back to the church the things that belongs to the church. He's trying to give its property back. Not the spiritual things. If it would, he'd have shook that whole nation like Elijah did. But trying to give them a material thing. We own property. We're a great organization. We belong to it. We all, all you people, you Protestants, should all join with us. <laughs> We're coming to that in a little bit. It's all brothers and sisters, anyhow. It isn't. Amen. Never was and never will be with a real, genuine church of God. Can't be. Notice, he saw the vision. And so he said, God spoke to me. Now look, the man was sincere. He said, he said, make these horns. 
and go up there before the king and push westward. Or whichever the way the land laid from where they were standing. Push! And that'll be, Thus saith the Lord, that he's going to win the victory and come back. A victory for the church. Go drive them out. That's pretty close, isn't it? What was the matter? Here come Micah down. Said, now you give your prophet. Said, go on up. But I've seen Israel like sheep. Scattered having no shepherd. <laughs> exactly vice versa. Now you're the congregation. Now which one's right? Both of them prophets. The only way you can tell the difference in them is check it by the word. Said, how do you get this? He said, I saw God sitting up on the throne. He said, I saw all the council around him. Now remember, Zedekiah just said he saw God too. In the same spirit. I saw God. He told me to make these horns out of, out of iron. Go out there and push the nations out of here. For this belongs to us. The others ain't got no right into it. They would have stayed right with God. They would have had that, but they got away from God. That's where the organization is, the church. It's got a right to these things, but you've been cheated out of it because you've gone away from God's Word. God's Spirit, anointing, to vindicate the Word of the season. Don't you fail to get this message. Notice what's taking place now. He said, I saw God, Micah did, sitting upon the throne in heaven. His council was gathered around him. He said, who can we get to go down and deceive Ahab? To make Elijah's words come true, my prophet, that was vindicated. I spoke it. He had come and Elijah had my word. And heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not fail. I don't care how modern they get her, how good they get her, how educated they get her, how big they are. My words will never fail. And a lying spirit come up out of hell, fell down upon his knees and said, If you'll just permit me, I can give them my anointing. Make him do any kind of a sign or wonder, as long as I get him off the word. He won't even know that that is your word. He'll ignore it for popularity. Yeah. Brother, times hasn't changed. Yeah. Brother Neville, that's true. Yeah. Do you remember that's true? Yeah. I'll get up on him, make him do the same things the rest of them does. I'll make him prophesy and tell a lie. How could it be a lie? Because it was contrary to the word. You take any of these false baptisms, false so-and-so and so, I don't care how real it sounds, how much they try to impersonate it, it's a lie if it's contrary to God's word at this hour. Yeah. Exactly. You say, well, our, well, we did this and we did this in our churches this way and that. I don't care what it is, if it's contrary to the written word for this hour, it's a lie. Yeah. God will have nothing to do with it. No matter how sincere, how educated, how smart, how true it sounds, how reasonable it sounds, if it's contrary to the word of this hour. We'll get into that a little deeper in a few minutes. Time permits us. We don't, we'll take it up again tonight. Notice. He was sincere, a good man, no doubt. He said, then otherwise Micah said to him, not right out to his face, the Lord, you are anointed with a lying spirit. Wouldn't that be something to tell a bishop? But he done it. And so this bishop walked up and said, you'll never have fellowship no more, and smacked him in the face. Said, you know that I'm a vindicated man. My church made me the head of it, this thing. The popular vote of God's people made me this. My organization made me this. And God gave us this land and He intends for it to belong to us. And I have thus saith the Lord. Smacked him and said, which way the Spirit of God go when it left me? Micah said, you'll find out one of these days. When California is beneath the sea out yonder, and <laughs> are they saying, hey? you'll see which way it went when you're sitting in the inner prison. Now, Ahab, what are you going to say? I believe my prophet, he said. What if he just searched the word? See, he didn't want to see himself cursed. Hear me? He didn't want to see himself cursed. No man does. And my organi organizational brother, that's what's the matter with you. Amen. You want to think 
that you're right when you know in your heart when you baptize you in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you're lying. Do you know when you say those things that you're doing, you take initial evidences and all things like that, you're wrong. How can the initial evidence be speaking in tongues and then talk contrary to a promise of God in this hour? Amen. How can it be? You don't want the curse, do you? But you're written. So shall it be. That's the mark of the beast. So close to to see the elected, if it were possible. Ever sign, ever wonder, anointed man, prophecy, all kinds of things going forth, all kinds of signs, all kinds of wonders. How are you going to tell the difference? Watch the word for this hour. That's how you take. Watch Moses, how he could have told Balaam. Watch Micah here, how we know he was right. The word before him had prophesied that for Ahab. And the word before us prophesied these organizations for this day and this curse upon them. And the things that would take place by his truly anointed church will have the word, a word bride. Here we are. Here it is today, just as it was then. The Bible said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I spoke of Balaam. I spoke of Balaam and of Moses. Now, I spoke now of Micah and Zedekiah. Now, I'm going to give one more, which is hundreds of them, but one more to make three witnesses. I've got a whole string of them wrote down here, but to preserve time. <clears throat> Jeremiah, who was a vindicated outcast, but a vindicated prophet of God. They hated the man. They throw the un- overripe fruit at him and everything else, and he... Put the curse upon him. And the things that he done and laid out there on his sides and things. And give signs that Israel was wrong. Every prophet, true prophet, ever raised in the world cursed those denomination organizations of the church. How could it change by the unchanging God? The Holy Spirit is the prophet of this hour. You're vindicating his word, proving it. The Holy Spirit was a prophet of Moses' hour. The Holy Spirit was a prophet of Micah's hour. The Holy Spirit which wrote the word comes and confirms the word. Now what happened in the time of Micah? Ahab was killed and the dogs licked his blood according to the word of God. All you false teachers, so saith God, someday you'll reap what you're sowing, you blind leaders of the vine. I'm not angry. I'm just telling you a truth. Amen. And I would have said this if a parent in that room with the Holy Spirit didn't say, say it in that manner. Have I ever told you anything wrong but what God proved it to be right? Amen. 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 Wake up, my brethren, before it's too late. Well, let me say this. How could a thorn wake up and be a thistle when it was predestinated to that? How could the elected keep from seeing it? Because you're elected to see it. All the Father has given me will come, said Jesus. But none of them can come unless He's given it to me from before the foundation of the world when their names is put on the Lamb's Book of Life. Got a little church rector. But on the book, Lamb's Book of Life. Notice, Jeremiah stood up Vindicated before the people, yet they hated him. And so they went out and made a yoke, he did, and put it up on his neck. and went before the people. They said, oh, we are the great people of God. Wow, we're Israel. We are so sincere to our synagogue. We attend every Sunday. We, we offer sacrifices and we pay in our money. How can Nebuchadnezzar ever hold the holy things of God? <laughs> Your sins have done it. God said, if you'll keep my commandments, I won't do this, but if you don't, it's coming to you. That's exactly right. Still the same. Keep his commandments, his word for the hour, what he promised. Now notice. Now Jeremiah, by the will of God, vindicated prophet, though hated, every one of them is hated in their days. They done such strange things contrary to the denomination of that day. Everyone hated him, even kings and everything else. 
So he put a, a yoke on his neck and said, Thus saith the Lord. They're going to be down there for 70 years. Because he had an understanding from the Word of God. 70 years. Then Hana, Hanan, I guess you pronounce it. H-A-N-A-N-I-A-H. Hana, a prophet amongst the people. Come up. Took the yoke off of Jeremiah's neck. Broke it. And said, be a big shot amongst the people. When it was speaking contrary to the word of God. And he said, two years they'll be back. Thus saith the Lord to anointed prophets. How was the difference that one had those speaking the word and the other didn't? Jeremiah said, Amen. Before all the elders of the congregation, all Israel, see, he wanted to show he could be just as big as Jeremiah. You know, they don't like it anyhow. So I'm a prophet also. I'm a more of a prophet than you are because you're prophesying a lie. You tell me God's people is going to be under such and such a thing. That's what they say today. But you'll be there just the same Amen. as the church. Amen. You're cursed with a curse. Amen. All you churches, denominations, Holding to the tradition of man instead of the word of God. You're cursed by God. Amen. Now notice, here he comes. Hana jerks this yoke off his neck, a symbol of God. Broke it and said, Thus saith the Lord. Two years, he'll be back. Just said, for a show, I'm so and so. Because he stood in, he was an organizational prophet. Jeremiah was a wilderness man that lived by himself. He prophesied evil against them all the time because they were evil. And this man was telling them, oh, you're all right as long as you belong, as long as you're Israel. That's all that's necessary, see. You're, we, God ain't going to do that. I know there's a little something happened here, but don't be alarmed. Don't be scared. <laughs> oh, brother, they still live today. Don't worry. Everything's all right. We got everything under control. We're the church. Don't you think that? Yeah. So he said, everything's all right. They'll be back in two years. That's the little thing. It's nothing unusual. We have that. This Nebuchadnezzar come up here, but our God will take care of all of this. But the Word said that they'd be there 70 years. So that generation had faded away. And another generation, 40 years is a generation. This is almost two generations you're going to be down yonder. And Jeremiah said it according to the Word of God. Hannah broke that. Jeremiah said, all right, amen. But Hannah... Let us remember this. We're both prophets. We're ministers. And I say this to you, my brother. Let us remember there's been prophets before us. And they prophesied against kingdoms. They prophesied against certain things. But remember, when the prophet said anything, he must prophesy according to the word. Like Micah and Moses and all the rest of them must be according to the word. If it isn't, then remember what happens. And Hannah... Righteous indignation raised up. I'm Hena. The prophet of the Lord. I say two years. In other words, I don't care what the word says. It's not on him. I say two years they'll be back. Jeremiah walked out from the forum and I said, Lord, I don't care what he said. I still believe. No, that word says so. I'll stay true to you. I'll not be deceived by him. God said, go tell Hena. I'll make it out of yarn, the next yoke. Because he did that, he was taken from the face of the earth. Hanan was that same year. There's our examples. Both prophets. So many more could be said and talked of at this time, but watch. Jesus said that in this end time, again, the two spirits would be real close together again. Is that right? Yeah. Now notice, it will be closer than that was. This is the end time. Oh, children, God have Amen. mercy upon us. So it would even be so real till it would deceive the very elected if possible. Now, how you go, How did we tell it in them days? How are you going to tell it today? The same way. Stay with the Word. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I carry all this message, and when you listen to the tape, even maybe I'll be gone someday. 
when the Lord's finished with you here on earth, you refer back to this. Listen to my voice, what I'm telling you. If he takes me before he's coming, just remember, I spoke to you in the name of the Lord, by the word of the Lord. Yes. Notice, be so close together that would deceive the elected if it were possible. Would do the same signs, the same miracles, by the same Spirit. Is that right? Just like the prophets was that we just talked about. Prophets. Now also it is written, let's turn to it, this one if you want to, uh, 2 Timothy 3. Let's not leave this. And I don't want to, I look at that clock up there and I, I want to omit a lot of it and I don't think we should do it now. They notice just, if I'm standing here perspiring like I am, see, but I'm happy. I know that this is true. 2 Timothy 3.8 Paul, the man who said, If an angel comes from heaven and speaks any other word to you than that what I said, let him be cursed. Now, an angel come down. That's 2 Thessalonians. Oh, I'm sorry. Notice. In the 2 Timothy 3.8 What's Paul speaking now? Let's begin with about, uh, let's begin at the first of the verse. And listen now, real close. You that have your Bible, read with me. You that don't have your Bible, listen close. The, this know also that in the last days, underline that, last days, that's when it's going to happen. Peerless times shall come. We are in it. For man shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Look at this bunch that we got today. Rotten. Even a man out on the street, young man, pulling their hair down on their forehead like with bangs like a woman. Perversion, sodomites. Did you read this, year, this month's Reader's Digest? said the American people at the age of which I think it was between 20 and 25 years old is already in their middle age condition. They're finished. They're rotten. Science says that. That a man's in his middle age in a woman when they're yet in their early 20s. Their body's so rotten and given over to filth. Oh, America, how off God would have hovered you. But now your hours come. You lead the world in filth. Amen. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections. No true love even for one another, man to woman, woman to man. Not even natural affection. Filth sexually. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, and despisers of those that are good. In other words, say you're a bunch of holy roars. Someone asked the other day about coming up here to the church, said, Don't go up there. All it is a big bunch of noise and carrying on. Despisers of those. Traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. You say, Brother Bram, that's communist. What's the next verse say? Having a form of godliness. But what? Denying the power thereof. The Word, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and forever, manifested a promise for the day. Just exactly like Hannah, just exactly like uh, uh, Zedekiah, just exactly like Balaam, on back. Other false prophets. Having a form of godliness. Anointed. See? Having a form, anointed, ordained ministers. Having a form of godliness, but denying. That he's the same yesterday. Denying his word. How did they deny Jesus that day? Who did they deny when they denied Jesus? The word. They were religious. They taught from their Bible. But denied the present day word. What are they today? Same thing anointed. Preaching the gospel of Pentecost. But denying the present day promise of the word being vindicated. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you see it? 
For this is the start. Are they which creep into houses and lead silly women, laden with sin, led away by divers, lust, or sowing parties, and our so-and-so. Somebody come around trying to misinterpret the word and saying this. It's all right, sister, for you to have short hair. Don't pay attention to that nitwit. See, if you, you wear this, it's not that. It's what comes out of a man's heart that defiles him. See, and do you realize that you are anointed with an evil, lustful, dirty spirit? Here, you might sing in the choir with short hair. But you got an evil spirit. That's contrary to the word. Right. That's what the Bible says. And you say, well, I wear shorts that don't condemn. Whosoever, if a woman puts on a garment that pertains to a man, it's an abomination in the sight of God. The unchanging God said that. Oh, so many things. How could we just go through it? Our time would be away. But you know enough to know what's right and wrong. And how can I make them do it? How can I do it? Say, well, what you hollering about? I'm a witness against you. Someday in the day of judgment you'll have not a corner to go into. How can Micah stop that? How can Moses screaming, trying to stop it, and Joshua and them running among the people, and Levi pulled his sword and slayed them even? They went on just the same. Amen. It's predicted that they're going to do it, and they're going to do it. Amen. For it's thus saith the Lord they're going to do it. You think? Them nominations will ever break up their denomination, come back to the Word? It's thus saith the Lord they won't. Will they go into the Antichrist? Exactly, it's thus saith the Lord they will. So what are you saying about? I have to be a witness, and so are you. All believers. Watch. Silly women. Laden with divers' lust. What all the rest of women do. False prophets. Now, listen. False prophets, I'm speaking of. Now, what will they do in the last day? Lead silly women. <sighs> Led away with divers' lust. Well, I know all the rest of women. All right, go ahead. What did I say just before this big happening here in California? You people here in Los Angeles, every year when I come back, there's more bump-haired women and sissified men than it was the first place. Hallelujah. More preachers going into organization. You're not without excuse. If the mighty works have been done in Sodom and Gomorrah was done in you, you'd be standing today. Oh, Capernaum. Amen. Thou who callest yourself by the name of the angels, Los Angeles. See what's happening? He's going right on to the bottom of the sea. Yes. When? I don't know. When it's going, but it's going. Amen. Young people, if I don't sit in my day, you watch. He's gone. Amen. Ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, there's a shocking. Here's the shocking part. Listen to this. Now, as Jamus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Man of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith that was once delivered to the saints, of course. Concerning the faith. And he shall turn the faith of the fathers, or the children, back to the fathers. Reprobate concerning the faith. Mm. You know what reprobate means? If you've got a Schofield Bible, he's an H there right up there. It says apostasy. An apostasy. That's what it is. Now, just a minute. I want to look up something here. I think I... Wrote this down right. I'm not sure, but I want to say it. Look it up before I, I say it. Now, just one minute. Reprobate concerning the truth. Concerning the faith. The faith. There's only one faith. That's right. Concerning the faith. Reprobate. Now, I want to read Luke 18. Just a minute. You don't even put it down, you don't have to read it. And he spake a parable unto them, and to this end, that man ought to always pray and not faint, saying, saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God and regardeth not man, and there was a widow in the same city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would, and he would not... For a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this will trouble me, I will avenge her, 
lest by coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his elect which crieth unto him day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Now that's the question. Here's where I want you to get to. In Revelation 10, we'll get to it in a few minutes to another scripture for it. He said, in the days of the message of the seventh angel, the mystery of God ought to be finished. Here's the question is, if you follow in that line in this hour, will it be finished? Will I find the faith? Will Malachi 4 be fulfilled in this time? Restore the faith of the children back to the faith of the fathers. The original, the word, see, reprobates. Jambres and Jambres as they withstood. Now also, listen, 2 Timothy 3, 8, as Jam- withstood Moses, also in the last days these same reprobates would come. Now see where it says here? Having a form of godliness, anointed ones. Now let's just, you go back and, and read it when you get home so that I can finish out this this morning if I can. Reprobates concerning, not reprobates and, and, and uh, living, they're fine, cultured man. Now notice, when Moses went down to Egypt with a message of thus saith the Lord and was vindicated, called on Israel, which was a people, not a church. Israel was a people, they never was a church because the word church means called out ones. They were the people of God. Then when they become anointed under the word and called out, they become the church of God and then backslid because they believe not the word of God and listen to a false prophet. Hope that sinks in. Israel being a people of God, come out under the hand of God, anointed with the word, with the power of God, seeing the signs and wonders of God, and then when God was moving on with them, a false prophet come in anointed, and taught something contrary to the original Word of God that they had heard, and every one of them perished in the wilderness besides three people. Now hold it. As it was in the days of Noah, wherein eight souls were saved by water, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Lot, where three came out of Sodom, so shall it be in the time when the Son of Man shall be revealed. I'm only quoting Scripture. The Lord's Word, which heavens and earth will pass away. It'll be a minority. Notice, here Moses goes down to Aaron. Moses was to be God. God told him to be God. That you be God. And let Aaron, your brother, be your prophet. You put the words in his mouth if you can't speak well. But who made man dumb? Who made man to speak? The Lord did. He walked down there. What did he do? He performed a true and just miracle that God told him to do. God told him to go cast your rod down. He picked it up as a serpent. He picked it up and turned back to a rod. He said, go do that before Pharaoh and say, thus saith the Lord. And when Pharaoh saw this, we said, why, what a cheap magician trick. He said, there's nothing to it. It's mental telepathy or something, you know. We got guys in our organization can do the same thing. Come here, Bishop so and so, and you, you come out here. We got them can do the same thing. That was Satan talking through Pharaoh. That's God talking through Moses. Oh, watch this fella come out. Jambus and Jambus walked out before Moses and publicly before the people and performed every miracle that Moses could do. They will deceive the very elected if it's possible. Is that right? right? Perform the same thing that Moses did. You get it? Now remember, it's thus saith the Scripture that it will repeat again in the last days. What was the difference between Moses and Jabez? Moses said, let blood come in the water. And these false prophets said, sure, we put blood in the water too and it happened. 
So Moses said, let there come fleas. What was he getting straight from God? See? And what did he do? He said, well, sure, we can bring fleas too. They did it. Any miracle that Moses could do, they could do too. Remember, keep that in mind. We're coming to it after a while. They can do anything the rest of them can do, but they can't stay with the Word. Amen. They can't stay with the Word. Now notice, they did it. But Moses, the true sent prophet from God, commissioned by God, he never fussed with them. Said, here, you can't do that, you can't. He just let them alone. <laughs> just let them go on. There are organizational prophets, but go ahead. Moses just went right on, listen to God, whatever God said, now you do this. Moses went and done it. he done a new thing. When they did, each one of them had a sensation or something. Here they come. They did it too, just exactly like Moses did. Now, notice, these fellows appeared. Oh, you people, don't you miss this. These imposters, impersonators, appeared after the true one that went first. Amen. They come to impersonate. See, they have to. The devil cannot create anything. He just is a perverter of the original. And what is sin? Is righteousness perverted? What is adultery? The right act perverted. What is a lie? The truth misrepresented. A perversion. Look at Hana, a perversion of the original word. Look at Balaam, a perversion of the original word. Look at Zedekiah, the perversion of the original word. And the Bible said that these guys would come out after the perverter to pervert the original word, vindicated and proved to be the truth. Do the work of an evangelist. That corner out here. Make full proof of your ministry. For the time will come when they'll not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall heap for themselves teachers, having itching ears, and go ahead and do anything they want to, and it's all right, we got the same signs and wonders, and shall be turned from the truth and be brought into fables, dogmas. Oh, the awareness of the Holy Spirit. The awe. That strikes a man's soul when he stops to think how real and plain it's right before us. Dig up that cornerstone out here and read a piece of paper that's put in there 33 years ago. See what he said over yonder on, on 7th Street that morning when this cornerstone was laid. Now watch it. Watch down here on the river when the angel of the Lord came down in a form of a pillar of fire. Hundreds of the churches or peoples of the church standing around the bank. What he said, see if it's come to pass. See what's happened. It's so hard. I know it looks hard, brethren, out there. But it's, the Bible said, Jesus said himself, it would just see the very elected if it was possible. Uh, no way around it they'll never be able to see. It. If it was possible, the very elected would be deceived by it. Notice, these fellows appeared after God's true anointed was sent by his true prophet Moses. And when Moses would do anything, they would impersonate it. Now, uh, brother, sister, I, this is my own church. i got a right to preach what I want to as long as it's out of God's Word. And I ain't condemning you people. But let's just search that for the time and hour that we're now living. Greetings to Brother Ruddle, to Junior Jackson, and them out here, our brother churches. I forgot them a while ago. I think they're hooked in this morning, too, because of no, no room in the church. Just think of it now, just for a minute. They did the same miracles... That Moses did. Moses brought fleas. They impersonated it and brought fleas. See? God said, the day you eat thereof, that day you die. Satan come around and said, surely you'll not die. You'll just be wiser. You'll have a better organization, a better, you know, you know everything will be better for you. have more light. Just a perversion. And remember, thus saith the Lord, according to 2 Timothy 3.18, that in the last days, that this Jambus and Jambus would be on the earth. Now, I want you to notice there's two of them. Impersonators. Now we're going to get back to Sodom after a while and three, find them three angels that came down and see the impersonation and so forth. 
see which is right and wrong. Notice, they did the same miracles. But notice, they impersonated after the true word had been anointed by the true one that God had sent. Followed secondarily. I wonder if we could take for a minute, taking the people by the hand not long ago, about 20 years ago, and a sign showed. Boy, there was more signs all over things. Everybody, one's got his right hand, one's got his left hand, the other smells his... All kinds of... And I wonder, God won't let me tell you at this time what was really the truth. But one day you're going to find out. That was just to make their folly manifested. That wasn't right at the beginning. I'll tell you one day if the Lord permits. Notice, they did the same miracles. But they didn't, notice, they didn't do it till after the original word went forth first. That's why Satan done the Garden of Eden. That's why he done all time. Who prophesied first? Moses. Who would come on the scene first? Moses or Balaam? Moses. Who come on the scene first? Jeremiah or Hannah? <laughs> you see what I mean? Amen. Notice, they copied carnal impersonators. Sincere. Thinking they were doing God a service as David did last week. But carnal impersonations. I'm just waiting a minute. I want you to think between these places. If I don't say it, surely the Holy Spirit will reveal it, especially to the elected. Pharaoh's denomination says, we have man that can do that same thing. And they did it. See? Why did Pharaoh do this? Why did God permit it? Why would God send a true anointed prophet down there to perform a sign before Pharaoh and then let a denominational copy come around and copy it before the people? Why would he let an impersonator rise up to do it and do the same thing exactly the genuine Spirit of God done? See, the Scripture must be fulfilled. Notice, he did this so that he would harden the heart of Pharaoh and the Egyptians to prove that Moses wasn't the only one that had the word. They could do everything just the same as Moses could do. And why did God let this thing happen in the last days? So, the same thing as the lion spirit said to Zedekiah. How are we going to get Ahab out there to make these things come to pass? How is he going to get these people trusting in their churches to get out here to let this thing come to pass that he predicted they, in this latest CN church age? Because thou sayest thou art rich and have need of nothing, thou said as the queen, have nothing. Knowest thou not that you are miserable, wretched, blind? Amen. Amen. Now counsel to come by me, he said. Oil and gold. Why did he do it? Why did he let this impersonation rise up in this last days when these things are coming to pass by the true word of God and let impersonators come up and do the same thing and deny the true word of God? He did it for Moses and Pharaoh did it against Moses and though Jambres and Jambres did it against Moses and the Bible said that it will repeat again in the last days. Here we are. Now, if that ain't Scripture fulfilled, where is it at? Did Moses fuss at him and say, Hey, hey, you can't do that. I'm the only one that the Lord ain't do that. Hey, you stop that right now. He just let him go. Let him go on. Remember, the Bible said, As their folly was made manifest, so will these in the last day be made manifest. When the bride is raptured and taken into the sky. Notice. Moses, the true manifested word, never said nothing, just let it go. But he did that so he could harden the heart of Pharaoh, deceive Pharaoh. He did that very same thing so he could deceive Ahab. And that one little guy standing there by himself, little Micah, tell him, thus saith the Lord. Here stood another and anointed, thus saith the Lord, and contrary one to another. We stand today with thus saith the Lord that the water baptism in the last days is to be in the name of Jesus Christ and another man stand and perform miracles in a Trinitarian. 
Show me the word Trinity in the Bible. Show me where there's three gods. Show me where there's such things as that. It's not in the Word of God. There's no such a thing as anybody ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost using those titles. All these things. Oh, that's all right, sisters. That's all right. Just have long. You're short hair. That's all right. You don't have to do this, that, other. Oh, that's nonsense. Some old fogey. But the Bible said, and he promised in the last days he would send the spirit of Elijah Amen. and would call the people, the children of God, back to the original faith like it was in the beginning of the word. Amen. That word would confirm the Son of Man in the last days the same as it was in Sodom yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He promised to do it. It's God's promise. It's thus saith the Lord. Notice. They did the same thing. Just as Moses did. Until God got enough of it. (laughs) Now remember. It's thus saith the Lord. It'll come to pass in this day. Now search over the world. Take every cult. Take every clan. Take every man. Take every church. I charge you in Christ's name to do this. You preachers. I charge you to read the newspapers or take consideration anywhere you want to go and see if it isn't on the earth right now. Then Matthew 24, 24 is exactly right. False anointed ones will rise in the last days and will be false prophets and shall deceive many. Watch it in the types now as it comes out, see? Shall deceive many. Prophets, plural. Christ anointed, plural. Many different ones, a Methodist and a Baptist and a Pentecostal and so forth, see? But there's one genuine Christ spirit. And that's the Word made flesh as He promised to do it. Now, we'll move on just a little further to some more scriptures. Until God got enough of it, then it was over. Their folly was made manifest. Notice, Remember, the shuck looks exactly like the wheat grain. See? Now, you couldn't say back there in the Lutheran age, the stalk was a wheat, yet it's got the life in it. The stalk was all right. The life in the stalk was all right. But remember, the life advanced on. Advanced from Elijah to Elijah. The life keeps advancing on. But remember, it's in another stage. It can't remain in that stage. We can't eat the Karen of some other age. We can't eat Pentecostal Karen, Methodist or Baptist. See, it's become a Karen. We have fresh food. The word of this hour. So forth. Remember the shuck is exactly like the grain of wheat. It didn't look like it in the blade. It didn't look like it in the tossel. But it sure did in the shuck. It didn't look like in the... Jesus Christ saying yesterday in Luther... Didn't look like it in Wesley, but sure does in Pentecost. Uh, to see the very elected, if it was possible. See? There's your ages. But remember, that Pentecostal church in the last days was a lady of sea, and Christ was turned out, the kernel, the wheat itself. When he tried, remember, when he tried to manifest himself in the church, he was taken out. He's still a church, claimed to be, anointed. But here's the word, Christ himself. That's the anointed word which will come for the rest of his body, the bride. The anointed of the same water that watered the wheat, as we talked about, also waters the terriers. Anointed ones. Only the elected or predestinated will be able to detect the difference between them. Now, Ephesians 5, 1 tells you so and about how it was. They are anointed ones. Everybody say, glory to God, we got freedom down here, hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah, we speak in tongues and jump. We got freedom of the women. You people try to put them on oh, all these kind of things. See, go ahead. There ain't nothing you can do. Say, well, we speak in tongues. We shout, we dance in the Spirit. We preach the Word. Absolutely. Not a thing to say against it. So do these men back here in the Bible. Jesus said to deceive the very elected if it was possible. The very elected. Now notice. The shook. From the original green, green, that went in the ground, it was not no organization. It was one green in itself. But when it come up, it was not a green. It was an organization. See? 
leaves, corn. Then it went into another stage, which was a tussle. Still, it wasn't like the beginning. It was an organization. It went into the shuck, many leaves, Pentecost, almost shaped out. Now, look at it. It's taking shape all the time. Almost exactly like the same. Looks exactly like a grain of wheat when you see that little hull there. But finally, it's manifested in no organization. There's no more carriers. Organization is just a carrier. No more carriers. The stalk must die. The shuck must die. The, everything else must die. But the wheat lives on. That's the body of the resurrection. Comes right down and picks them up. They which are last to be first and they which are first to be last. See? Picks them right up in the resurrection. Are you following this? All right. Notice. The grain is, the shuck looks exactly like the grain in a man raising a wheat farm or something that would look and say, praise God, I got a crop of wheat when he ain't got one speck of wheat. It looks just exactly like the wheat, but it's a shuck. Now, friends, go back with me. Where is the first revival come after the death, the days when the grain of wheat had to fall in the ground, the body, the bride of Christ? Christ organized his bride. Is that right? His church. He never organized it. He just set apostles, prophets, and so forth in the church to keep it clean. But at Nicaea, Rome, 306 years later, they organized it and made an organization out of it. Is that right? And it died. Everything that didn't agree with that church was put to death. And it laid still for hundreds of years in the dirt. But after a while, up she come in Luther. The first little sprigs of corn come up. The second it brought it out from there, they went on that swingly and so forth and the other organizations and so forth. Then after a while come the Angulin along and then what happened? Here come Wesley along with a new revival. The tonsil. That looks a little more like the wheat. Then what happened to that? It organized, dried up and died. The life went right into a shuck. And the shuck come forth almost perfectly like the wheat. But finally... Its folly was made manifest in the last eight or ten years, especially in the last three years. Now, what does it do? Pull away from the wheat. Now, why hasn't there been an organization start up in these last 20 years of this great revival? It's anointed prophets, anointed teachers, so forth. But why ain't there? There's nothing beyond the grain. See? It's back without an organization. Oh, my. A blind man could see that. It cannot organize. It's so firmly against it. It's a grain of wheat itself. The Son of Man will be made manifest. The grain of wheat will come back to itself again. The Son of Man in the last days. And there will come false impersonations of it. In the last days, that will almost deceive the elected, if possible. Look at their organizational shucks pulling away now. It only lets the wheat be known to the elected, which are part of it. Notice how beautiful this is brought in here now. Only the, notice the anointed ones. Be able, the true elected, predestinated, Ephesians 5, 1, or 1, 5 rather, will be ordained, elected. They are the only ones that it will not receive. Notice the anointed prophets will be false. And there among them will be true anointed. How are you going to tell it? By the word, like we have in Shadda. Do you see it? Say amen. 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 See? Notice. The anointed ones. Only the word will separate them. Not the signs. Oh, no. They'll do the same signs. Amen. But the word will separate them. Amen. Sure. They all prophesied. They all done this, that. Yeah, sure, just the same. Jesus said to do the same thing. But the words what separate them. Notice, not signs. Did you notice Jesus said here in Matthew 24, He didn't say there shall rise false Jesuses in the last days. Oh, no, they'd never stand still for that. <laughs> no, you get a Pentecostal, it's a real Pentecostal, say himself, he's Jesus. You get a false Methodist or a Baptist or somebody like that, or one of the organizations say, we're Jesus. They know better than that. They ain't going to do that, but the Bible said they'd be false Christ. Not Jesus's, but false Christ. They wouldn't have recognized, say, I'm Jesus. Oh, no. But they're false Christ and don't know it. Because they're contrary to the Word. And God vindicates the same. Now, I'm just bringing this right down to a showdown now. Because you've seen the same thing done by these people. It's been done in the real. And Jesus said so. Now, as I said now to you people out in the 
telephone land there. I, I'm not condemning you, but this is my church and my group that the Holy Spirit set me over, and I've got to tell them the truth. Amen. The hour's getting late. Now, they would not stand for that. But false Christ, false anointed ones, almost with every sign and every letter of the word, they believe baptism of the Holy Ghost? Absolutely. Believe in all this? Yep. Believe in speaking in tongues? Yep. Believe signs and wonders? Follow signs that follow them? Yep. That's not Methodist. That's not Baptist. No, no. That's Pentecostals. This is the last days. Now, the first church age never noticed that. Methodist church age never noticed it. Baptist church age never noticed it. Presbyterian church age never noticed it. But it's a Pentecostal. So close like the real thing. That's where the wheat, the shucks is almost like the wheat. They never noticed it. See? They wouldn't. But it's the last day. This day. Yes, sir. Notice. Just like it was at the beginning, so will it be at the end. As Eve just misinterpreted one word Satan did to Eve and she believed it. She, not he. The church, not him. See? The church was the one who got the false word. See? Not Adam. Eve. Not the Christ. The church. The bride. The anointed is supposed to be. Calls herself the bride. <laughs> she got the false word. Can't you see that? Why it laces together like a shoestring. Like the lashes on your eyes. Why everything you turn to the Bible it just lashes it right together. Eve, not Adam. Eve believed it, not Adam. The bride today, so-called, believed it, not the Christ. The bride has all kinds of so-called brides. Same signs, same wonders, same everything, but not the real one. To see the elected, if it was possible. Now, quickly, if we can get this finished in 15 minutes, we'll be on time. Notice real close now, so you won't, you won't be misunderstanding to you. Now, no, they wouldn't stand to be called false Jesus. They wouldn't be saying to call Jesus, certainly not. That's too plain. Anybody would know that. Anyone would know they wasn't Jesus. I don't care if they had oil on their back and blood on their hands and up and down their eyes, they still know anybody's got good sense knows it wasn't Jesus. They, they wouldn't stand for that, but they call themselves the anointed. And they do signs and wonders almost to deceive the elected. But false Christ, anointed ones, shall arise and shall deceive the elected if it were possible. Now, watch closely. Don't miss this statement because it's worthy to listen. Uh, he's just putting some tape on this microphone here to keep it from uh, flying up. I've been perspiring, dropped on the tape. You see? And so it'll be just like if the Bible said it would be. See? Notice. Not false Jesuses, false Christ. They believe they're anointed, but they know they're not Jesus. See, that's too plain. If man wants to say, that, look at the scars in my hands. Look at all my brow. I am Jesus. Well, now, nah, we know it. That's wrong. And remember, Jesus never said that them guys would appear. He said they would appear false Christ. Christ, plural. Denominations and so forth. Anointed ones. Not only with the denominational spirit, not the word. You follow it? Amen. Not false Jesus, false Christ, false anointed ones. See? Oh, how plainly, how we, surely you won't miss it. Now remember, I've always told you there's three classes of people. There's three races of people. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Three races, three classes. Now I said, that is the believer make-believer and unbeliever. It's always been, always will be. See? There was Moses, the believer. There was Jambus and Jambus, the unbelievers. See? There was Balaam, Moses. Always had three classes of people. Three classes, believer, make-believer, and unbeliever. Now remember, the unbeliever, the denominational church, don't believe in any signs at all. Cold, formal, starchy. The church and the world. The denomination. But the make-believer is that shuck. That's the guy that makes believe. And then there is a real believer. That's really true. 
Now watch them as they go along now, just for a minute. And notice how bold these unbelievers are, or these make-believers and unbelievers. My, they're bold. Look, even as Satan stood right up in the presence of the true word and said, It's written. Is that right? Why did Satan do that? It's because he didn't know the word for that. He knew the word was for that hour, but he doubted this humble little man being that word. If thou be the Son of God. I know the Son of God's coming because it said he would do that. And it's written, he'll give these angels charge over thee. See? Prove it to me. Do a miracle. Let me see you do it. See the unbeliever, make believer, impersonator. Look at Judas right among them at the same time. Make believer. <laughs> See? Notice. And that was a true word. How bold they are. Now don't pay attention to that nonsense. There's nothing to it. Don't go up there, it's just a bunch of noise. There's nothing to that. That's just all fiction. That's in your mind. See? See what I mean? Stand right in the presence of the word and say it. Satan walked right in, as the Bible said over here in Jude, even the archangel. When disputing with Satan, said the Lord rebuke you against the word itself. And here is the Antichrist, the anointed, standing right here against the genuine word of the day, Jesus Christ. And said it's written. Look at the last days to be so close to deceive the very elected if it was possible. Oh my. The reason the elected won't be deceived, you know why? Is because they are the word. <laughs> See? Just like the life that's in the root, I said a while ago. It can't deny itself. See? It is the Word, and in the season of the Word. That's right. Just like Jeremiah, he knew, no matter what Hannah said, he knew where he was at. That's exactly like Moses did, and, and the rest of them. That's, he knew, no matter what the false prophet said, there was the Word of God, it was written. That's the reason Micah could say, all right, you just wait and see. Ahab said, I believe my prophets. My organization's right. When I come back in peace, Put that fellow back under in the prison. I'll take care of him. Give him bread of sorrow. Turn him out. Don't have no fellowship with him at all. When I return in peace, we'll take care of that guy. Micah said, if you return at all, the Lord hasn't spoke to me. He knew he had thus saith the Lord, and his vision was exactly what thus saith the Lord. Not for some other season, but for that season. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The season. Oh, stand up and dispute with the archangel. It's been said that fools are trod with hobnailed shoes where angels fear to walk. That's right. The reason the elected Jesus said won't be deceived because they are that word. They can't be nothing else. They can't hear nothing else. They don't know nothing else. That's right. Remember, Moses wasn't carried away with all their impersonations. Was he? Moses said, now, wait a minute, Pharaoh. You know what? The Lord told me to do this, but glory to God. I see that your boys can do the same thing. So tell what I do. I'll join up with you. Huh. That don't sound like a prophet of God. Amen. You know, he stood just as firm as he could stand. He knew exactly God would take care of it somehow. Because he promised to. I'll be with you. I'll not leave you. He knew. So he didn't join up with him. Oh, no. He stayed right with him. He didn't want none of their denominations. He stayed right with God. He wasn't carried away by all the things they could do. When they did one thing, he brought lies, they brought lies. He brought blood, they brought blood. He brought everything, they impersonated him every way right along. He just stood still. He knowed exactly what God was on the job. You understand now? You take two and two and make four? You don't want to scorch too hard. <laughs> so you, you understand, see? Why? They won't be deceived by it, the real believer. They are predestinated seed that should stand in the day. Just also, Jesus said this, Many will come in that day in my name and say, Lord, have not I cast out devils in thy name? Jesus said at the end days, when the time is all over and the great resurrection comes, that many will come and sit down in the kingdom. The kingdom of God's within you. Many, the weeds will come and sit right down with the wheat. Say, so now, wait a minute, Lord. I spoke in tongues. I shouted. I danced in the Spirit. I cast out devils. I spoke with tongues. I done all these things. What do you say? Notice. You workers of iniquity, I never even knew you. 
What is iniquity? Ask somebody. It's something that you know you ought to do and you won't do it. They know that word. They hear it. You're listening to this tape. You're listening to this message. You see the Lord God say so. You see Him confirm it and make it true. And you know this is as plain as the sun shining outside. But you that will hold on to your denomination, hold on to those false things, you worker of iniquity. Oh yes, I had great campaigns. I'd done this, I'd done that. said, you depart from me. You worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Well, the Holy Ghost fell on me. I don't doubt that a bit. I spoke in tongues. I sang in the Spirit. I, done it. I don't doubt that a bit. No question of that. Oh, brother, sister, what kind of a condition? This is a trembling time. Where are we at? This word is coming to life now. Notice. Yeah, he said they'd do that. Notice, you workers of iniquity. I got a scripture written down here. I don't know just where it was. It took so much time. I'm going to look it up just a minute and see what it was. I got, I got Matthew 7, 21. Uh, I just don't know where. I, sometimes I don't jot something down with it. Well, I, I was preaching like this. I, I forget what I was referring to on the scripture. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many shall say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied? Prophets. Anointed ones. Is that right? Yeah. Wasn't we a prophet? Wasn't we anointed? Anointed ones? Have not I prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have not I cast out devils? How can you do that and refuse to be baptized in Jesus' name? <laughs> oh, my. See how deceiving? Right up to that very point and drop back. They go right up to the Word and drop back. Now, watch this. We get this out. Just a minute. Many will say unto me, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied? We've been prophets. Yeah. I spoke of that in Matthew 24, 24. And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name done many, many works. And then will I confess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. When it was put right before you and you've seen it and seen it moving, seen it was the Word, and for your denominational sake you just held into it? I never even knew you. I don't care how many devils you cast out, how many you did this and that, I knew nothing about you. Balaam said, I prophesied right your name to come to pass. That's exactly right. But when it comes to the Word, you refused it. Oh, brother, see the deceiving part? Not prophet exactly, but with the Word. True word, vindicated word, made manifest, you workers of iniquity. Try, Satan has tried in all ages to impersonate the true word. We know that, don't we? Notice, come up to the borderline and quit. Look here. He said in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, and I was reading a while ago, I told you to refer back to it, and we will for the next couple of minutes. He said, but thorns and thistles, which is nigh to rejection, whose end is to be burned. Borderline. Ye who have tasted the heavenly gift. Tasted. In other words, you've seen it. You can't just taste it with your mouth. But you've seen it. And you knew it was the truth. You know it was the truth. Tasted the heavenly gift and made partakers of the Holy Spirit as it fell upon you. Tasted of the good word of God. Tasted, you see, it was right, and the Holy Ghost falling upon you, the weed in the field. And then turn away, denying the very Christ that sanctified you and called you in, put that anointing upon you. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin for that. It's unpardonable. It's impossible for him to ever come to the knowledge of the truth. For it is impossible. For those who were made partakers of the Holy Spirit fell upon the weeds. See? Started in with Jesus. And Lord, I'm going through, but when you hit the word, you turn back. Made partakers of the Holy Spirit and even tasted or seen the Word itself manifested and then turn away from it. It's totally impossible for him to ever see it or come to it. That's thus saith the Scripture. 
I, heavens and earth will pass away, but it won't. You see it? Totally impossible. The Bible said so. And the Spirit bears record of it. Notice, let me give you a little example. Look at those people who come out under Moses' prophecy. Come out of that organization and come out of everything under the prophecy. It's all the great works and wonders and things like that. And come up to the borderline of going in. Now, Lee, there comes your name on the book. See, you've got it fixed out. As you're not here and out in the, on the hookups, Dr. Lee Bale sitting here, he's grammarizing this book of the seven church ages and the pro- problem come up with a question about your name taken off the Lamb's book of life. See, it's puzzled a lot of ministers. But wait till you get the book, you'll understand it. If you ain't got any light in you. Notice. Now you'll turn your head and won't even look at it if you don't want to see it. Like my mother used to say, you can't get blood from a turnip because there's no blood in it. Notice, the light has to come. It's not in darkness. The light comes to the darkness. And the darkness perceives it not. (laughs) Notice now, the anointed ones, in this day, as Moses brought out those children of Israel and they listened and got all confused with that great nation up there. Now, Israel was interdenominational. It had no land, had no home. It was going to a home. We had no church. We we were going to a church. The church of the firstborn. The church that's in glory. Not the church that's on earth by man. The church that's in glory. The called out ones predestinated to eternal life. See? Going to their home. And when they come up to the place to cross over... They doubted the word. And come back after Joshua and Caleb and Emma went over and brought back a bunch of grapes to prove to them the land was there. The word of God's promise, it's a good land, milk and honey, and brought it back on this side to prove it to them. And they tasted of it and said, oh, we can't do it all. What happened? They perished in the wilderness. They stayed right there and organized themselves and died every one of them. But the ones that went over and brought the back, Joshua and Caleb, Moses is translated. A type of the waiting for the church, the resurrection of the Old Testament, New Testament, and the raptured body. See the three there. You have to keep them threes in line. See. So in the believer and unbeliever. Notice how it was totally, remember, God never did forgive that sin. Now, how are they going to come in? If it's thorns to begin with, it's thorns at the end. Only the predestinated will see it. Notice closely now. Just like in the days of St. Martin, right before the Dark Ages. Godly little man. How many ever read the writings of St. Martin? Many of you have. We went down to get the writings of St. Martin. The priest said, but he wasn't Canaanite. <laughs> sure he wasn't. Not by them, but he was by God. Amen. The Holy Spirit told us to put him there on that third church age. Hey, look what a godly little man he was. Called, predestinated, his parents heathen. His daddy a soldier. He had to follow his line to be a soldier. And when he did, he always believed that there was a God somewhere. A man in the woods and could see God. One day... He passed by a city and there was an old bum laying there dying, asking somebody he's cold that night. Well, he said, give me something to cover me up, I'll die tonight. Nobody would do it. And Martin stayed off to one side and watched him for a while. Nobody would do it. He only had one coat. He'd freeze himself. He's on duty. If he, he'd give him that coat. So he thought, both of us have a chance to live if I'll divide with him. So he took his own coat and split it in two with his saber and wrapped the old bum in it. He wrapped his own coat around everybody. said, look what a funny looking sentry. Look what a funny looking soldier. Half a coat wrapped around him. The next night when he was off of duty and laying in his bed, he woke up, looked standing there in the room, and there stood Jesus Christ, wrapped in that old piece of a garment that he put around him. He knew right then, what you do unto my little ones, that you have done unto me, to mine on him. Laying there, he's a great servant of God. The church made fun of him, persecuted him, kicked him out and everything else, but he was a prophet of God. What he said come to pass. There's many believed him in that age too. I'll show you how deceiving the devil is. One day he was sitting in his study. Up come a mighty angel. Crown on his head, golden shoes on, lace around his garments of gold, and said, Martin, 
Do you know me? He said, I am your Lord and Savior. I'm the one that saved you. Worship me, Martin. But that prophet, knowing there was a little something strange there, he kept looking at him. He said, Martin, I am your Savior, Jesus Christ. Worship me. Don't you know me, Martin? Martin kept looking at him. The scripture running through his mind. He said, Satan, get away from me. He said, you've got a crown on your head. And the word of God says his saints will crown him at the end of the age. Wouldn't that have been Pentecostal bait? <laughs> What's that word, brother? That's where it pays. One day again in the monastery, they had an old saint down there, a bunch of young monks, and one of them kind of irritable. Watch this. Here's a good, a good parable today. He wanted to be something above the rest of them. He wanted to show himself authority. Bigger something. Something better. All clash, you know, and great big something. He had to be classical. Always wanted the other brother not, you know, he had to be different. See? He, uh, no matter what it was, he was very arrogant. He was the only pebble on the beach. There was nobody could touch him. Now watch what happened. He had to have something big. He had to compare with the, the big societies. You follow me? Yeah. Hey? So he said he prophesied. He said, the Lord's made me a prophet also. I'm a prophet. Now, there was one identified prophet in the land, and that was St. Martin. He was born a prophet. But this kid said, young fellow said, young monk, about 25 years old, he said, the Lord has made me a prophet. Now, I'm going to prove it to you. He said, tonight, the Lord's going to give me a big, fine robe. Put it up on me, a white robe. Set among you, and then all of you shall come up to me. And you'll take orders from me. Now compare that today. See? I'll be the head of the organization. I'll take care of you, the rest of you monks. And sure enough, that night, a light's come on in the building. So the writing of St. Martin says, read it. And it's authentic. It's history. And the lights come on and all the rest of watched. And here comes, he had on a white robe standing among them. He said, see what I told you? That's contrary to the word. And when he went and got the old dean of the college, he walked up and down a little bit. He said, son, that don't sound right. He said, there's only one way. Here it is. There's only one way for us to know it looks supernatural. Boy, if Pentecost would have grabbed that root, sinker, line, hook, and everything else. He said, the miracle may seem all right, but it don't seem right to the Word. Now we have such a person, an anointed prophet, by the name of Martin. Come go up before him. The guy said, no, no. Martin ain't got nothing to do with this. He said, you're going anyhow. <laughs> and they grabbed him by the arm to take him before Martin and the robe left him. Amen. Hallelujah. See, deceive the elected if it were possible. See? They know him. Jesus said, my sheep know my word. Oh, you say, hear my voice. That's his word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. See? The predestinated knows this. A strange word or a strange voice, they won't follow. That's the way those fellows back there, they wouldn't follow. They know that Mark was there, a prophet of that age, identified by God through the word, know the word. And that man wouldn't stand before it. He also said, where the carcass is, or the word, there in season the eagles will be gathered. Now that's Matthew, you're going to put that down, Matthew 24, 28, just a little bit for Matthew uh, 24, 24, four verses below it, see, the owner good. it. Where the carcass is, the manna is, the word is, there the eagles will be gathered. Now I must hurry. I looked up there and seen what time it's, it's seven minutes or eight minutes after twelve. I'll hurry real quick or we can finish it up tonight, either one you want to do it. This morning or tonight? Huh? How many has to go home today after the service? Let's see your hands. See? Oh, my. Better keep on. I'm sorry to hold them people on them phones out there like that. But I hurry. It's worth more than your money. Amen. I believe it is to me. See? Your money will perish this one. It's the word. See? Where the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered. Where the carcass, where the, the, the killing is, there the eagles will be gathered. Where the fresh meat is. <laughs> the word of the season. There the eagles will gather. But after it's rotten, 
then the vultures will swarm to it. <laughs> See what I mean? When a kill's made, here comes the eagles. Where they flees, they're rotten, and here comes the vultures. The eagle won't have nothing to do with it. See? Jesus said, where the carcass is, where the manna fell, the night the manna falls fresh, there the eagles will gather for it. That's the manna for the day. See? Notice, but after it gets rotten, maggots get in it, then here comes the vultures. They can smell it till it gets rotten. No wonder Jesus stood up there and said, Jerusalem, you that stoned ever prophet. Notice that personal pronoun. See? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how off would I? Who was he? How off would I have gathered you as a hen would her brood? You that stoned ever prophet I ever sent to you. That great church, Jerusalem. The Jerusalem which not your own earth, but we are the Jerusalem of above, where the word come from, from predestination. See? Not old Jerusalem that perishes, the new Jerusalem that can't perish. Not the old Jerusalem built by man, but the new Jerusalem built by God. See? The word up there now being made manifest, in my Father's house are many mansions, I'll go and prepare them for you. The Creator, making the streets of gold and so forth. That's the one that doesn't perish. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how off would I, from the beginning of time, not a third person, somebody else, but I would have hovered you as a hen did her brood, but you would not. But now your hours come. See? Where the carcass is, the eagles will gather. But after the carcass is rotten, then the buzzards gather. See? Notice, Moses, he never gave the children of God. Moses is an eagle. And he never gave the children of God Noah's leftovers. <laughs> He had the fresh word of God. The Lord God met me in the wilderness and confirmed his word and sent me down here to call you out. Then there come impersonators around impersonating it, see? But he had the word of the hour. Because God said to Abraham, the one who had the promise, your seed shall sojourn in a strange land 400 years, but I'll visit him and take him out with a mighty hand. Moses said, now the Lord God will speak to me. And show me, has told me what to do, and I'll tell you. He said, I am sent me. I am not I was or will be. I am present tense. The word now. Not the word it was, the word it will come. The word is now. See? You get it? I am. I am is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word is with God. Is that right? I am. God sent me as his prophet to vindicate this to be true. I am the answer to this word. So me come down here and do this. And when he did it, Pharaoh said, well, we got plenty of boys in our group can do that too. The impersonators. Jesus said, now that's going to repeat again in the last days. See? Claiming the same thing. Watch you come down first. Watch you stay with the Word. That's how I know. So you see, uh, uh, we notice Moses never give them what was Noah's time. We'll build an ark now because that's the word. You know Noah built an ark one day. No, vultures is eating on that. No, no. This is a promised word. Notice, for his message he had from God, he had the genuine predestinated word of God for that hour. Neither did Jesus serve him Moses left over. <laughs> Moses had word for that hour. But Moses is a prophet. Here's God himself. Eh? He never sold to remember Moses left over. But just look at the vultures there and that organization was glutton over it. We know we got Moses. We don't have to have you. He said, if you'd have known Moses, you'd know me because Moses spoke of me. <laughs> See? Where the carcass is, the eagles will gather. Eagles. The fresh kill of the Word. The Word is raised up and fattened and been made manifest and give out to the food for the children. Now the old carcass that's laid there for hundreds of years, there it'll be. Same now. Luther had a message of repentance. But you bunch of Lutheran buzzards. Baptists had a message, but you Baptist buzzards. See? The Pentecost had a message. Coming home now. Pentecostal buzzards. Amen. But where the carcass is, there the eagles will gather. Amen. Remember, you couldn't feed a Lutheran. Back in them days, you can now. 
Catholic, I Karen. No, sir, he had fresh meat. At that church age. You can feed Methodist Lutheran message. Oh, no, he didn't want that, I Karen. It's rotten. See, the life had done left it went into something else. That's the old stalk. It's dead back there. The life's moving on. Neither can you feed the bride of Jesus Christ Pentecostalism. Amen. No, indeed. Maggot bloat organizations, nothing doing. No, no. Hallelujah. For the promises. And before that great and terrible day shall come, I'll send to you Elijah the prophet. He will restore the hearts of the children back to the faith of the fathers again. All these promises have been made in the Bible. I will do it. There the eagles will gather. All that the Father has given to me will come to me. See? Jesus never tried that. But when Jesus came, he found them uh, swarms of vultures. We got Moses in the law. (laughs) Well, that was good eating boy back under what was killed to give to him. See? That was all right then. But this is what was predicted to Moses himself that killed the sacrifice. Said the Lord your God shall raise up among you of your own brother a prophet. It'll come to pass that everyone will not cling to that prophet and what he says will be cut off from amongst the people. And it was. Look how about 600 different prophecies fulfilled right there in the Old Testament to Jesus Christ. They pierced my hands and my feet about, I forget how many was fulfilled in the last seven or eight hours of his life. All that prophet said perfectly. If I prophesied today that a certain thing would happen in a year from now, maybe I got, I got 20% chance for it to happen, whether it's right or wrong. And if I predicted that that would happen, and didn't say when, I got a smaller percent. If I predicted when it would happen, it gives me a smaller margin. If I predicted a place that happened, it gives it still a smaller margin. If I predicted the, who it would be on, then I still got about one hundred thousandths of a margin it ever coming to pass if it's not true. And every word, Amen. hallelujah, that was wrote of that Messiah was fulfilled to the letter. Even to one day reading the scriptures, he stopped right in the middle of the sentence and said, The Spirit of God is upon me to preach the gospel and deliver that. And stopped right there in the middle of the sentence because the rest of it says his second coming. Amen. 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 Heavens and earth will pass away, my word shall not. Amen. See? He was the word then. That was feeding him then. Moses told him the truth. But you see, they always make a denomination out of it for the vultures. To, they, some of it left. As the eagles have done eating, gone home. Then they're waiting to see something else. The word they say, here it's supposed to come. We had caribou yesterday. We have sheep tomorrow. <laughs> see what I mean? There's old caribou carcass down there gloating. <laughs> but we got sheep coming today. Where's it at? <laughs> See what I mean? Angels' food. The people that eat manna one day, if they tried to keep it over for the next day, it got contaminated. Don't you see all the types? How perfect? Same now. Notice the vultures of Jesus' day was also casting out devils, anointed ones, on the old carcass. Is that right? They were casting out devils. Jesus said so. And remember they had Prophets in those days. K. Ephesus, the high priest, prophesied. How many know that? K. Ephesus prophesied. Look, notice the position of the weed in the field is watered by this same anointing. Why did the Bible say he prophesied? Because he was high priest that year. A rotten scavenger. A weed and a thistle. Setting among the wheat, but the Spirit was upon him, the genuine Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God was upon him to preach, prophesy, and foretell it to come to pass, and denied and crucified the very vindicated word of the hour. Oh, mercy, brother. How much longer do we have to say these things, see? How much more through the Scripture? I'll hurry. i got about ten pages here of Scriptures. How... Proven all things. The son on the just and the unjust the same. Jesus said, to prove this, if I cast out devils by the finger of God, by who does your children cast them out? Now, they were casting out devils. They were prophesying. Is that right? But did not recognize him being the word of the hour. Why? Because
because he wasn't associated with them. Now, take Matthew 24, 24. False Christ anointed ones will rise, and there'll be false prophets prophesying. See? And will deceive the very elected if it was possible. You got it now? Notice. The children. Who does the children... If I cast out devils by the Word of God, which He was the Word of God, who does your denominational children cast them out by? Now. And God alone can cast out a devil. We know that. God alone. For the strong man has to be stronger than one in his house. They had power to do it. You know, the revelations there said he, that Antichrist that raised in the last days done signs and wonders that even deceived those that dwelt upon the face of the earth. It deceived every one of them, Christians and all, whose names were not written in the Lamb's book of life. Answer in Matthew 24, 24. Whose names were not written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the world. That life that was in the root of that of that genuine orange tree that come up through all those citrus and everything else and passed on and put the fruit on top of the tree above all the denominational grass and branches. You got it? I'll hurry. The strong man. Remember David now. He was honest, sincere, trying to do God's work and wasn't ordained to do it. They, the anointed ones. But Jesus said, they're teaching for doctrine the interpretation of the scriptures of man. See? Not the word of God. Not his vindicated word. Teaching a historical Christ. See? Something that was. And the Bible said he is. I am not I was or will be. I am right now. He's that word that lives through here. He was in the beginning. He was in the, he was in the, the blades. He was in the tossle. He was in the shuck. But now he's in the grain. Now you go back and try to live again. What's that life tucked back down? You think that life, life would ever talk, go back at that old shuck's dried up? You ever go back and live in it again? It never does. For it is impossible for those which were once enlightened and didn't move on with the word as it come to pass. They're dead, gone. And the thorns and thistles, which is nigh to rejecting whose end is to be burned. Is that right? Now, hurry just as quick as you can. Notice the scripture now, teaching a historical God, see, just like uh, trying to live in the past, like, uh, well, Wesley said so and so, so and so said so and so. You're refusing the promise. Word of the day, the manna that's clearly identified of the day. They try to put their old Lutheran Baptist Pentecostal wines in our new bottles. <laughs> it don't work. And our new wine in their old bottles won't work. If they try to put this new wine in the denomination, their folly is made manifest. <laughs> they can't do it. It blows her up. Now... Nah! Brother, I've seen the Word of God perfectly by the Word. Now, look here, doctor. If uh, we, we can't have that. Ned, I think you've had some of that lately. <laughs> we, we just can't have that here. Now, I, I would rather that you maybe just go on. You know. See, it won't work. <laughs> it blows up. You don't put a new piece of garment in an old garment because you make it all rent. <laughs> See, didn't Jesus say that? You can't put new wine in old bottles. It blows them up. The new wine's got life in it. <laughs> All right. Notice here something real quick now while we're ending the, our talk. Notice Revelation 16, 13 to 14. If you don't put that down, I won't have time maybe to go to it. I want you to be sure and say it. Now, notice this is the sounding between the sixth and seventh vial. Now, we're, we're closed out just in a minute. If you can just bear a few minutes longer. Closing out now, notice. Revelation 16, 13 to 14. Between the sixth and seventh vial, three unclean spirits like frogs, did you notice that? Went out of the mouth of someone. Now notice quickly, are you ready? Say amen. amen. A trinity of spirits. Now, denominational brother, sit still just a minute. Don't get up and walk out of the room. Back out there on this radio or telephone hookups. Don't turn your tape recorder off. Sit still just a minute. Listen. If you're born of God, you will. A trinity of frogs. A frog is an animal that always looks backward. He never looks where he's going. He looks where he's come from. Okay. Don't you see? Where was Trinitarianism born? Remember, three unclean spirits. Individual spirits. Are you...
Are you getting it? Notice, they look back to the Nicaea Council where the Trinity Doctrine was born at. Not in the Bible. There's no such a thing. They look back to the Nicaea Council at Nicaea Rome where the Trinity was born at. Notice where they come from. Notice that the Trinity of Frogs came out of an old Trinity. Give birth to a new Trinity. Their mother. What did it come out of? A Trinity. The dragon. See? The beast and the false prophet. A trinity knew for the... When would these frogs come out? When did it notice? They are there all the time. But it wasn't manifested until between the sixth and seventh vial, just before the seals opened, to reveal it. Or in the message of the seventh angel, the mysteries of God would be known, all these trinitarian things and false baptisms and everything that would be made manifest. God help us to see what's the truth. And I'll think it's somebody trying to say something to, to feel that spirit resent messaging. I'm not speaking of myself, brother. I'm speaking of the angel of the Lord that's in the camp. The dragon man. Hallelujah. Notice a trinity, the dragon. How many knows what the dragon was? It was Rome. And the dragon stood before the woman to devour a child as soon as it was born. Is that right? What does beast mean in the Bible? Power. <laughs> All right? False prophet. A false prophet. A false anointed one. <laughs> See? Started where? This is false prophet, singular. False prophet, the first pope. <laughs> and from there come out the, the whore and the mother of harlots. The whole thing. A false trinity was rising, not in the early days. Would be made manifest in the early days. You went right on through with it. But when the seven seals become and open those mysteries and reveal them, that's when the frogs, three unclean spirits like frogs, come out to manifest themselves. A trinity doctrine against the truth. Hmm? <laughs> See where it come from? See where it's going back to? Ecumenical council? They're all brothers anyhow. Same spirits. Same thing. And watch. So deceiving, performing miracles. And these are devils that go forth to all the gods of the earth, working miracles to deceive them in the last days. And will succeed in doing it. What did God say to about that evil spirit that I'll go down and get in the mouth of those prophets and cause them to prophesy a lie? To cause Ahab to come out there to be destroyed? God said, go, you will succeed. You'll get them to believe it. They're not on that word to begin with. Go, or you will persuade him. You'll be the one to do it when you get them false prophets because he's relying right on them and he don't know nothing about the word and he would have tried to learn about it. He can't do it because he's a thistle to begin with. See? You'll succeed. Look at these false frogs looking back. Well, you know what they said back there at Nicaea? I don't care what they said about that Nicaea. I'm saying what they said up here at the throne of God. What would be, not what was, what will be. For he's I am. Eh? False. Look at that. <laughs> Notice where they come from. Now, listen closely. We see plainly after the seven seals has been opened. That's to reveal that mystery. What is that trinity? Why was it ever called Trinity? Why in the Bible does it even speak the word Trinity? Why could there be three gods that we worship three gods and not be heathens? How can they be separate when he said, I and my Father are one? Except you believe that I'm he, you'll perish in your sin. See? Your unbelief. Sin is unbelief. You'll perish in your unbelief. Oh, who do you say that I am? From whence did you say that I came? Or do you know my father? Or can you tell his name? I am the rose of Sharon, the bright morning star. <laughs> can you tell me who he is? <laughs> I am that spoke to Moses in the burning bush of fire. I am the God of Abraham, the bright morning star. I am the rose of Sharon. Or whence did you say that I came? Oh, do you know my father? Or can you tell his name? Amen. 
I'm Alpha, Omega, the beginning from the end. I am the whole creation, and Jesus is His name. That's right. No Trinity. No, sir, that's a false thing. The seven seals opening those mysteries that should be finished. Shows up. Seal open. Disposes. Shows up. Makes plain the hidden truths that the seals had hid all these years through all those churches and denominations. The great whore of Revelation 7. Who was she? But she's the mother of harlots also. See? Now, you call them vultures, you say, Brother Branham. That's right. But remember, a vulture is a bird. He is anointed to fly also. The two spirits be so close to deceive the elected. A vulture is as big as, a, as an eagle. He can fly like the eagle. And is anointed to fly or to preach or to prophesy. Notice, as same as the eagle. But he can't follow the eagle in height. No, no. If he tries to follow the eagle, his follies will be made manifest. <laughs> yes, sir. He can't follow the eagle. Oh, he can say, I believe in Jesus Christ being the Son of God. I believe God the Father Almighty, creator of heavens and earth, Jesus Christ his Son, and so forth. Oh, sure, they can do that. But what about him being the same yesterday, then, forever? Amen. See, an eagle is a special built bird. There's nothing like him on the earth. Okay. He, he, if a buzzard tried to follow him or any other bird, he'd disintegrate. His follies would be made manifest, sure enough. He'd blow up when he tried to put the new wine in an old bottle. See? He would blow up. He'd disintegrate. He ain't made. He ain't, his body isn't put together with his structure to hold him up there. When he gets to them great spears up there, if he wasn't made, ordained, predestinated, barn eagle, he'll bust to pieces. The feathers would fly out of his wings and he'd fall to the earth. Sure. He can't follow the eagle in height. If he tries to, his folly will be made manifest. That's right. He can't. Why? He can't see like the eagle. What good does it do to try to jump real high and can't see where you're at when you're up there? And if he should try, even try to impersonate this eagle <laughs> in height, he becomes so blind he don't know what he's worked up to. <laughs> That's right. He's screaming and shouting and carrying over to speak the word to him. Boy, there his folly is made known. <laughs> Talk to him about the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, him being the same yesterday and there, uh, all like that. Tell him, uh, oh, now wait just a minute. See, oh, yeah, right. there his feathers are dropping. <laughs> See, he's all jumped up and prophesying, casting out devils and speaking the tongues and shouting and carrying on, run up and down the floor. Don't try to fall out there. Why? You'll sure be made known. Yet he's ordained. He's anointed. He can fly. He can balance himself. Get up there, but not just so far. See, he can eat a Karen, but he can't eat the fresh meat that comes from the throne. He's blind. He's all worked up, but he don't know what he's worked up about. See, that same spirit that fell upon him like the rain, to make him a wheat, he's not a wheat to begin with. He blows up. Oh, I can't go for something. Oh, no, sir. I know Dr. Jones. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead if you want to. No. Notice. He is not born or built or predestinated to be that kind of a bird. He said he might be a lemon growing on an orange tree. <laughs> but he never come from the roots. He's something that's been added. And when they get so high in their denominations that they can't see the predestinated Word of God vindicated, <laughs> then their follies made known. All oh, that stuff, halo overhead and all, oh, it's nonsense. Yeah. Made known. He's not built to see that far. He can only see as far as his denominational glasses will let him look. <laughs> but after that, he's as blind as a bat. His stand, his follies made known. That's where the true eagle sits down to eat. <laughs> yes, sir. That's where the true elected eagles sees what he is. When he can't take that word, they know right then he's a denominational vulture. Mm -hmm. Why? Why can't he fly? Because look what he's been eating on. He's been eating on rotten denominational Karen. 
that won't, that won't spiritualize his body, won't put him in spiritual fitness, in other words, to carry him up above the denominational differences. Okay? See, he just fed on rotten stuff. His body's made out of that. He can't go up there where that fresh meat carries that eagle. He just can't do it. See? That fulfills Matthew 24, 24. He's flying, jumping, up in the air, flopping his wings, but he just can't get high enough. See? That's right. See, he can't, go, he can't reach high enough to get that fresh manna. He can eat the old manna that's down here on the ground. The old dead rabbits has been run over a week ago and a month ago or 40 years ago. Contamination. He can eat that and just gloat over it and squawk and holler and carry on, jump up and fly like another eagle. He's anointed, like another bird. And he is a type of an eagle, a buzzard is. We know that. He sure is. But he can't follow that genuine eagle. See, he just can't do it. No, sir. His body isn't built. He's been eaten on different occasion. See, and it won't be. It won't, it won't be the fresh meat, the fresh manna. It'll be something that Luther said, Wesley said, or Dr. So-and-so said. It won't be on what Jesus said for this hour. Let's go now. Close. Anointed ones, Christ in the last days. But the false teachers as false prophets. Notice how striking. Now, I want you to compare this. We haven't got time to read it out. Matthew 24, 24, with 2 Timothy 3, 8. Matthew 24, 24 said, In the last days, see, there will come false Christ, false anointed ones, false prophets, and shall show signs and wonders exactly like the real one, real one, and shall, and shall almost deceive the very elected. Now notice, that was Jesus speaking. Here come Paul right behind him and said, Now in the last days there will come religious people, see, having a form of godliness, and lead silly women, led away with all kinds of worldly lust, and they wonder, say, Why do you pick on them women? Oh, for goodness. They just don't even see it. Lead silly women laden with divers' lust away from things like it's a, other by see and it's jambers and jambins Matthew twenty four twenty four false Christ false anointed doing signs and wonders to deceive the elected now as jambins and jambins withstood Moses so will these reprobates reprobate mine concerning the faith not a faith the faith one faith one Lord one bad you can't have one faith without believing in one Lord. You can't have two baptisms, not one for the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and one baptism, Jesus Christ. That's right. See? False baptism. Notice. Compare them together now when you get home. Notice Matthew 24, 24. Jesus speaking. Paul, 2 Timothy 3, 8. Many others. And now, compare that, and then put another scripture, Luke 17, 30, Malachi 4. Uh, Jambus and Jambus withstood Moses, the anointed word of the hour. So will these man, not man, man, anointed ones, resist the truth. Amen. In the very day that the Son of Man is revealed, Amen. Revelations 10, 1-7, Read it when you get home. The seventh angel's message, opening up the seals. What is it? Not the angel is the Son of Man, but the messenger is revealing the Son of Man. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Can you get it separated now? Yeah. That's where it seems to be so hard for it, you see. Yeah. Not the Son of Man himself, but the seventh angel, the seventh messenger, is revealing to the public the Son of Man because it's left the shuck. He can't organize it. It's the grain itself again. Amen. And in that day, Jabris and Jambus will withstand, anointed ones, Amen. make believers and unbelievers, the church formal and the Pentecostals, Amen. stand up against the true grain, but let them alone. Their folly will be made manifest as theirs was. Amen. You understand now? Amen. Revelation 10 said, In the days of the sounding, of the seventh angel. Now remember, seventh lady of Sia church age. The sounding of that angel when that church age is done denominated and become a church age. When it's done in its Pentecostal organization, when the messenger to that, what was each messenger? What was Martin Luther? A rebuke to the Catholic. 
What was Wesley? A rebuke to them Lutherans. What was the Pentecost? A rebuke to them others. Where's the life gone now? Away from an organization. No more shuck its grain. What is it? A rebuke to the Pentecost. See? To fulfill the scripture of this hour. See? Notice. The very day when this messenger, not when he starts, on, but when he begins to declare his message. Amen. See, the first pull, healing. Second pull, prophesying. Third pull, the opening of the word. Amen. The mystery is revealed. Amen. No more, there's no more higher order to reveal the word than prophets. But the only way the prophet can be vindicated is by the Word. Amen. And remember, the third pull was the opening of them seven seals to reveal the hidden truth that's been sealed in the Word. Amen. Do you see it? Amen. It is then, in that day, when this thing is to take place, that Jambers and Jambers, the impersonators, will appear again just like they did when Moses appeared with the original word to say it, they appear to impersonate it just exactly right. Now, you see what Matthew 24, 24 is? See? Anointed ones. Now, there's three things we're going to say before we close. This is it. I want you to listen real close now as we close. Three things. Remember, three things have been fulfilled. Three things lays before you right now. First, the world is in a solemn condition. Jesus said it would happen. Look at the perversion. Our women trying to act like men, our men trying to act like women. Sissified, rotten, filthy, go down, devil possessed, and don't know it. The Bible said that would happen, and that's where it's at. Secondly, it's in that hour, according to the scripture here, that Jambres and Jambres appears. Secondly. Thirdly, it's that same hour that the Son of Man is to be revealed. There is your believer, your make-believer, and your unbeliever. There is a genuine word standing out vindicated. There is the make-believer impersonating it. And there is the unbeliever rejecting the whole thing. But it shall be like about the evening time. Way to glory you will surely find. Is that right? Nations are breaking. Israel's awakening. The signs that our Bible foretold. And the Gentile days numbered Sodom. With horrors encumbered, return, O dispersed to your own. The day of redemption is near. Man's hearts are failing in this fear. Be filled with God's Spirit. Have your lamps trimmed and clear so you can see the word of the hour. Look up. Your redemption is near. False prophets are lying. They said they'd be here. Anointed ones. God's truth they're denying Amen. that Jesus the Christ is our God. That's, they don't believe it. Amen. The Bible said there'd be that thing. Here, here it is. But we'll walk where the apostles have trod. Amen. Same night. And we'll restore the faith of the fathers to the children. The day of redemption is near, so near. Man's hearts are failing for fear of Earth's dropping in. Oh, be filled with God's Spirit. Have your lamps trimmed and clear. Look up. Your redemption is near. You believe that? Let us bow our heads then. Out into the land where this message is going from the East Coast to the West, from California to New York down into the south, up into the north, out into the missions and wherever it's going and in this tabernacle. We are poor. We don't have these great big flowerly things and television casts. We're just trying to do the best we can. But 
All that the Father has given me will come. Now, I want you to know this is sure, and you didn't listen to this tape. You might have thought today that I was trying to say that about myself, being that I was packing this message. I have no more to do with it than nothing. No more than just a voice. And my voice, even against my better judgment, I wanted to be a trapper. But it's the will of my Father that I declare to do and determined to do. I wasn't the one that appeared down on the river. I was only standing there when he appeared. I'm not the one that performs these things and foretells these things that happens as perfectly are. I'm only one that's near when he does it. I was only a voice that he used to say it. It wasn't what I knew. It's what I just surrendered myself to that he spoke through. It isn't me. It wasn't the seventh angel. Oh, no. It was a manifestation of the Son of Man. It wasn't the angel. His message. It was a mystery that God unfolded. It's not a man. It's God. The angel was not the Son of Man. He was a messenger from the Son of Man. The Son of Man is Christ. He's the one that you're feeding on. You're not feeding on a man. A man, his words will fail. But you're feeding on the unfailing body word of the Son of Man. If you haven't fed fully on every word to give yourself strength to fly above all these denominations and things of the world, will you at this time do it while we pray? Dear Father, this is a hard thing. It is not easy for a mortal to do it. Thou knowest all things. And I pray thee, dear God, that it will not be misunderstood, but in the light of your word may the people walk. And Father God, I don't know who the elected is. Thou knowest. I don't know when your coming is. But I only know that you said when this takes place, these false anointed ones, not right when they started, Moses just let them alone. Or he couldn't do no more about it. He could only say what you were saying. You told him to call, please. Then they called. You told him to turn the water to blood. Then they did it. Moses only carried out word by word, as you said. But then you were the one who made the folly manifested. Now, Father, you are God yet. The same word said that this would happen in the last days. Many honest persons, as we said last Sunday, putting their hand to that ark upon a new cart and not the shoulders of the Levites. That fell dead. Dead in sin and trespass. Arguing against their own conscience. Many ministers studying in his study, read that word and change the page quick. They keep from having to blast out to know he'll lose his social standing with the public, with his church, and with his denomination. God help us to never do that. Cleanse our heart, Lord, from all filth of the world. Lord, I stand ready for cleansing. I stand ready with this church and with all the listening in, and whoever will listen to this page. I stand, Lord, and ask for cleansing. Lord, take me to the potter's house and break me up. Mold me a service that you want. For Lord Jesus, I'm a man of unclean lips, as Isaiah cried, dwelling with people of unclean lips. And woe is me, for I see the revelation of God being made manifest as Isaiah saw the angels in the temple. I see the end time, Lord, and woe is me and my family. Oh, it's me and my people. Oh, eternal God, have mercy upon us. I plead for myself and the people. Let us not perish with those who believe not, but may we live with the believers. Every denomination, Lord, every man or woman, I can't ask you to bless a denomination when I know you're against it. But I can only say, Lord, if you have any of your sheep out among them, may they hear this tape. May they hear it, Lord, and understand it with the understanding you'll give them. And may they come out 
and receive you. May they not be deceived by the blindness and tradition of this day. May they not to try to eat as something that is a, was a carcass in another day. May they take the word. That's the way the Pharisees crucified you, Lord. They were taking the carcass of Moses' day and trying to gloat over it as you've given the tithe in the wilderness a fresh manna each night, meaning each generation. That's where they failed. It poisoned them. It killed them to eat that contaminated food. And spiritually, it does the same thing today. Kill them spiritually with a denomination. Help us, dear God. It's all in your hand now. In Jesus Christ's name. With our heads bowed, we're going to sing that while you make your decision. Will you go all the way? I and my faith, and he is the word, your call. Oh, I've wondered a long time, but really right now, hear it. Come unto me. Oh, you're just groping along. Yeah. Take up your cross. Follow me daily. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Down through the shady green pasture and by the still water. And where he is, he is. Lord, I see that Trinitarian folly. I see the whole world sold in it. Weeds growing everywhere. But where you lead me now, Lord, I'll be like those in Acts 19. When they heard this, they were rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Follow. I went part of the way, Lord. I love you receive you. Now I'll go with you. Oh, away. You're gone. I trust that that comes from my heart. I trust that it come from everyone's heart that's just singing that at this time. Maybe many who will hear this tape that's not present are not hearing it now. May we be willing, Lord, regardless of the price, that like a man going to meet another army, a soldier, a king, first he sits down and counts, is he able to do it? Can he give up the things of the world? Can he give up? Join up in the army of God's written word, march with his soldiers. Fly with his eagle. Grant it, Lord. In Jesus' name. You believe? You accept him? All right. We'll see you here again tonight, the Lord willing. You believe that to be the truth? Is it plain enough? And hey, the name of Jesus.
Lord that all the ministers has made known this morning recognize when a man has prayed all week, wondering what, seeing these scriptures and standing right up before you, and woe unto me, said Paul the Bible, preach not the gospel. At the end of his road, he said, I have not shunned to declare you the whole counsel of God as you have given me. I forget sometimes to recognize things. Because then he can dedicate the baby. Billy said to the day a man comes up, I've been coming here for two years, get my baby dedicated. Billy said, don't think bad about that. I've got a baby a year old. He ain't been dedicated yet, yet, so I'm just going to wait to get the order to walk up there himself, I guess. So we find, brother and sister, it's not, it's not, see, I, well, one thing, we should dedicate our children. We should baptize everyone. There's a pool, here's water. If you haven't been, what hinders me? Here's water. Yeah. Come right now, don't wait till night, come right now. There's a man standing here, I'll baptize anybody who's repented and make confession. If you've been baptized a dozen times, he'll baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for yeah. the See, we are that. But see, the message is on my heart. I must get it out. That's my sole purpose. Yeah. Regardless of what my wife says, my children says, my pastor says, my whatever says, it's my Lord. Yeah. I must get that out. That's my sole purpose. And now, many times I forget to recognize the ministry. I guess maybe our brother, Brother Neville, a precious man, these other brethren here, we're happy to have you. Not that we disagree with you, brother, to be different. Many of you here might be Trinitarian preachers. We don't want to be angry with you. We love you. And if we didn't try to believe that, I'd never leave this church I got down there on my knees and said, God, make me right. I don't want that ear to selfish spirit mixed up with mine. I want my spirit to be pure and clean, brotherly love, holy with the Holy Spirit. I, if someone does anything wrong to me, that's all right. So I might have the right to get back at him. I don't want that in my life. No. I, I want to have love. I want to be ready to correct with love. With love that absolutely answers I've got her for it. I don't mean to be different. Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, Presbyterian, whoever you are. I don't say these things is different to be arrogant with you. If I did, I'm a hypocrite. And that should be down here this all to bring you through to God. But I said it's because of love and I see where you're going. And I don't think it's in myself and saying I'm presuming. I give you the Say of the Lord. That's the truth. And I love you for those things. God bless you. Now, as we sing another verse of this song, let's, before we go, we want you to be here tonight. If you can, if you can, God be with you. No, we can. We just pray that God will, will bless you and give you the best of his land. Take the name of